Street, Daniel Ransom. And now the defensive start is for the Lions. Roots Chris Steakhouse. The steak dinner done right. Center State Bank. Bank smart, bank local. Melwood Springs Natural Spring Water. Atlantic Grill, your neighborhood grill. Play it again, Sports Buckhead, your neighborhood sporting goods store. Concord Pharmacy, when you have your health, you have everything. The Metro Atlanta YMCA, here for Atlanta, here for good. And by ESC Networks. It's game seven of the 2019 campaign for the Lovett Lions and it's homecoming here at the Riverbank at Martin Kilpatrick Stadium, Conley Oakley Field, and the Lovett Lions take on a longtime foe, one they played back in the 60s and 70s from over in DeKalb County, the Stone Mountain Pirates. Tonight, even though it's fall break, it's still homecoming at Lovett, and we had bouncy houses out on the Rayleigh Field. Ward, how much time did you spend in that bouncy house? Oh, that was awesome. You bouncing around a couple of those second and third graders, you know, made me get ready for tonight right yeah I, I think i sent one up into the top <laughs> of the uh roo roof complex thankfully there was no wind so nobody got blown away in one of those things yeah it was great, great turnout over there and great job by the by the alumni staff to put on another homecoming event it was awesome great to see folks here for homecoming uh if you're missing homecoming it's uh the years for uh i guess a renewal for the nines and the fours Class of 04, I just saw Tyler Caswell call it class of 04 down there. I saw uh, some folks from class of 89, Jim Choate. I mean, uh, 89, what am I thinking? Uh, 79, Jim Choate, Bill Bowden, others. And uh, it's great to be here back on the riverbank. And it's great to be back uh, broadcasting Love It Football again. I got that right. Welcome back, brother. Took a little bit of Glad that. you're here. Hiatus. Uh, some self-imposed and some not self-imposed. Don't worry, I was not. I'm not wearing an ankle bracelet. For those of you wondering, uh, I don't say parole tied uh, the way some people do. Sorry, I had to get that in. syncopation or not but that was uh, impressive yeah Good. great uh, job there by the Lovett singers uh, boy we've got some talent on uh, singing national anthem this year so far that's another great uh, great uh, tribute to America there very inspirational uh, tonight's uh, national anthem 
Burton, for those of you who might not have heard, was sung by the Lovett Singers, Sam Evans V. Lovett class of 1979, speaking of the class of 79, raised the flag, and uh, the invocation was given uh, by another class of 79 member, Lovett alum, James Sewell. That was a pretty outstanding class for the Lions back, uh, gosh, what is that? 40. 40, 40 years? A big 4-0. Talked to ago. Sam before the game. He was excited to be here. It certainly was uh, hard to look better than he does aging-wise. My goodness. Well, if, you was, if he was standing with Penny, he had to look good. <laughs> okay. So I guess, Ward, we may as well uh, see if we want to go to our uh, starting lineups according to the format or how we want to handle this. Here, take this. We'll get it for free. All right, starting lineups tonight uh, on defense for the Lions. At uh, defensive backs on one side, I'll have uh, sophomore Chase Nally, and the other side will be junior Alex Camillo, and our in the middle there will be senior Aiden Camillo. Linebackers for today's game, our five linebackers in the middle will be sophomore Stevie Bracey, flanked to one side, senior Mike Falls, and freshman Anderson Beaver. On the other side, uh, opposite of that, will be senior Cole Pizewitz and senior Bear Daniel. Those are our linebackers. And up front, the defensive line at the nose will be junior Wells Camershin. And the ends on the outside will be senior captain Luke Wall and senior Carter McIntosh. And offense for the Lions in the backfield. Uh, our fullback is senior Mike Balls. Our senior running back is Henry Beery. And our captain at quarterback is senior Blaine McAllister. On the offensive line on one side will be junior Wells Camerson. Next to him will be senior Kyle Barris. Our center tonight is sophomore Will Stimmel. On the right side will be senior Tebow Brooks and senior Luke Wall. Specialists on the Receiving side will be junior Josh, Jay Joshi, and sophomore Stevie Bracey, and the other side will be Logan Givens, a sophomore. And the specialist tonight doing the punting will be Dobbs Davey. Uh, Stevie Bracey, a sophomore, will be the long snapper. Henry Berry will do the place kicking, he's a senior. Uh, junior Charlie Caldwell uh, will be the specialist, and their holder is John Rush, senior. And that's your starting lineups tonight for the Lions. Game seven here on the Riverbank. It's homecoming. Glad you all are tuning in. And uh, the uh, Lions take on a Stone Mountain team that its one and four record probably isn't very representative of what they've uh, produced so far this season because last week they uh, fought pace down to the wire. It was a 27-20 win for the night. And... Uh, they were fortunate, frankly, to uh, come away with a victory because Stone Mountain stayed in the game the whole night long. They're a little thin tonight on the offensive and defensive fronts. They're, uh, they've got some kids who are out this week uh, playing tonight, and they may be down to perhaps eight kids on the uh, offensive and defensive front. Well, I think that's probably the biggest thing we see with some of these schools that we face in the region is just the numbers. And I don't know if that's a trend, you know, just overall with less and less kids playing football or if it's just, like you said, kind of an attrition thing with injuries. And, you know, it seems like, you know, midway through the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter with some of these teams, and you can just really see it start to set in. But like you said last week, uh, the Stone Mountain team gave Pace everything they could handle. and. Uh, probably, I'm not sure Pace really expected that, uh, given the, the track record with Stone Mountain over the last few years for all of these teams in this region. Um, but lines better be ready because uh, this Stone Mountain team's got a couple of studs at receiver, and the quarterback obviously is very athletic and can throw the ball down the field as well as run it. And They've got a couple of good offensive linemen. I think uh, Love it will be able to wear him down with the running game. Um, but we'll see. You know, got to come out ready. That's what... We've seen this Lion team do a great job of coming out and, and playing good football, avoiding the mistakes. Uh, I thought two weeks ago uh, against a good Cedar Grove team, but there was a lot of good tape. Scott Taylor and I talked about there was a, a lot of mistakes that could be corrected, but there was a lot of good tape on there that they lined up and battled against you know, a, busier, a bigger, more physical team with a lot of numbers. Um, so we'll see the Lions have come out tonight and try to impose their own will against this Stone Mountain team that, uh, like you said, Richard, gave a 
pace everything I could handle last week. And we've got a lot of folks filling in tonight. Uh, my granddaughter, uh, May Helen Jerichitis, is filling in tonight, uh, helping with stats. I don't know how capable she's going to do it, age two, but she's going to do her best with stats tonight. Uh, she's going to look and see. There she is on camera, I think, right now. She's going to wave to herself. She'll be watching that for years to come. <laughs> I hope she pays attention to the stats as well as uh, we do. So in terms of as I've watched the games leading up to tonight, uh, we're probably in the right position in terms of where we thought we'd be right now, and that is 4-2 and two is a very representative record. Uh, given the schedule we've got, GAC has Dawson County tonight up in Dawson County. We'll kind of see if GAC is really the class of that region. But having this game, going on the road to pace, having Redan, having Westminster, you know, the Lions have the chance to potentially get that second seed in the region. I don't think anybody's going to eclipse Cedar Grove this year. But... This is a this is a Lions club that they have they surprised some folks at GAC, surprised some folks with Mary Persons. So I'm I'm impressed with what they've built game after game. Well, that's a staple of Coach Muschamp is get better every game. And I know there were some mistakes in the in the Cedar Grove game, uh, but uh, those were those are correctable mistakes, and there was a lot of good competitive football against a really good, like you said, the class of this region year in and year out, the Cedar Grove team. And uh, I don't think you're wrong there. I think they'll most likely be the number one seed, barring some sort of injury and an upset. As we see captains going out to uh, midfield, captains tonight for Stone Mountain, big number 52, a junior offensive lineman, defensive lineman, Dylan Bryant. Number 13 there is a senior wide receiver defensive back, Jaris Cook. Next to him is a senior, let's check that, a junior wide receiver, number 24, Kendry Rees. And next to him is their fourth captain, a junior quarterback, number one, Cheyenne Bailey. Captains tonight for the Lions, as always. Big Luke Wall, senior offensive defensive lineman. Next to him is senior quarterback Blaine McAllister. Joining them tonight is, is uh, number 34, Henry Beery. And next to him is uh, senior offensive lineman Tebow Brooks. So captains tonight at uh, midfield getting instruction there from the referees. We'll have, get a coin flip here as you, you watch it along with us. This is seemingly one of every week. It seems like there's a, a longer explanation of official directions here, but we're eventually going to get a coin flip, I believe. Well, this is one of the great veterans of high school officiating down there, Richard Rice, who has uh, officiated since about 1978. Uh, he's our head. He's our. He's, been, he's the white hat tonight. He spent a few nights here on the riverbank, that's for sure. It looks like Stone Mountain won the toss, deferred, so the Lions will get the ball to start this game. Is it's homecoming here on the riverbank, game seven of this 2019 season. I, I can't think of a single time that Richard Rice has not done a game in the Dome or now at Georgia State, which ought to be a great arena for uh, the high school state championship. Yeah, it should be awesome down there. Uh, they play Army tomorrow. Georgia State does. I, I'll be curious to see what kind of crowd they get for Army. Oh, yeah, that would be a great turnout of that. You see the Lions break through on homecoming. This is our house. Band of Brothers flag. Fired up bunch here, ready for some football on the riverbank. I, I think I got out of the car, Richard, and it said 73 degrees is uh, parked down there. And so a few clouds up in the sky. Walked the field earlier. It's in pristine condition. And this is a uh, kind of football playoff type weather and feel to this Friday night matchup here. And it's a big one for the Lions. Need a victory to, uh, like you said, try to establish a hold on that number two seed or at least control uh, – the path there. You gotta take care of business against this team. Incidentally, those of you wondering uh, why I may have been away from some of the broadcasts, uh, I wanna thank probably the best urologist in Atlanta, Spencer Cozen. That may give you an idea of uh, 
what I had done two and a half weeks ago. Thank you, Dr. Cozen. What a great turnout tonight on fall break to see the crowd of these loving students out here. The ultras uh, have turned out in force. I'm very impressed. I don't know what the ultra theme is tonight. It looks like NBA or favorite team. Uh, and you have a Milton lacrosse jersey and an Oklahoma City Thunder jersey. And yeah. You have to Tracy win. McGrady down there. The ultras are in charge down there. Awesome turnout. So the weather and field conditions are exceptional. It's about 75 degrees probably on the field right now. Uh, the field is just in perfect shape. We could use some rain, but not during this game. Official time is 7.30, and thanks to Roos Chris Steakhouse for sponsoring our pregame segment. So the Pirates will kick it off and defend that south end zone. Their kicker is not listed on this roster. I don't think it's Christian Johnson. It's Christian Johnson's 5'10", 160, and this one is not. Soccer-style kick's going to be taken, gathered into the 20, up across the 30, up the 35, near the 40, and then driven back. Good return by Anderson Beaver, the uh, outstanding freshman. He was brought down right at the 39-yard line, 19-yard return for Beaver. Brought down by Dante Brown and Joshua Jones, and the Lions will set up first and 10 from their own 39. Moving on your uh, iPad from right to left. Bunch set left for the line, single receiver this near side. McAllister goes under center, hands it off to Beery, trying to pick a little bit of a hole. He's going to pick up maybe three, giving four up across the 40, up near the 43. That was a power set by the lines, two tight ends, one on each side. And under center there, just a standard old dive play, good blocking up front. Lions will go tempo. Mojo Towns brought him down the defensive end. Lions shotgun set, trips to this near side, single receiver up top. And McAllister looks this side, throws it out to Beery. He's going to pick up enough for a first down and get into Stone Mountain territory as he dives across the 50. Be marked at the 48. Boy, the turf monster didn't get him there, Richard. He's got 10 yards more at least. Great blocking there on the edge as we got the seal inside and outside. Perfect throw, good, good run after the catch, first down for the Lions. Saquon Bailey would, did trip him up, but it was enough for a Lions first down. First and 10 from the Stone Mountain, 48. This time trips to the right for McAllister. Joshi to this near side. He's gonna swing it out again to Beery. Beery's gonna get chased and slip one tackle, slip another and finally be brought down after about an 11 yard pickup. He got out of the arms of Shaheem Bailey, the defensive back and quarterback for the Pirates, but he finally was brought down by Jay Shun Hood and Jalen Patterson. Yeah, just a quick throw out, almost like a run and play, and Beery beat the one guy and then carried two guys more, and so three plays, two first downs for the Lions already into Stone Mountain territory. Yeah, Coach Moak's trying to go tempo, you can tell right now. Trips to his near side, two receivers to the right, and McAllister looks over to Coach Moak, No shift by the Lions. Plenty of time on the play clock. Here comes a blitz. He, oh, he had the hot receipt. The hot route was open for us. Michael Hollingsworth, I don't think, got around quickly enough. Yeah, he threw a slot. bullet, and I don't think he turned around in time. We saw that a couple weeks ago at Cedar Grove. A little bit of uh, just receiver and quarterback not being on the same page, but I think you, uh, that, that was the hot route read, and he was open, so a missed target there. Second and 10 lines from the 37, we'll call it. We'll hand it off to Hollingsworth. He'll spin ahead for maybe two to bring up a third and long, third and eight for the Lions, as Perry checks in along with Charlie Hope. You almost get a feeling, obviously, with Coach Mushtamp, this is four-down type territory with that second down call. Going conservative on the run, the power. 
there. We'll see what they do here on third down. Third and about eight, seven and a half or eight. They may go seven man front here, let's see. Out of the shotgun, McAllister's gonna roll this side. Look, floated a little high. Barry's gonna gather it in, get inside the 20 and finally get pushed out of bound by Bailey down around the 18 yard line. But he picked up plenty for a Lions first down. Great job by McAllister, because like you said, they had a seven or eight man front. One more than we could block, but he got outside enough and threw a little high. Great catch by Beery C on the replay there, and he had plenty of room after he caught easy first down. First and 10 lines from the 18. Again, out of the shotgun, his own number. Go off that left side and be pulled down by Mojo Towns, the defensive end. We'll call his name a lot tonight along with Davion Kennedy. Like you said, I think with this... This lighter numbers for Stone Mountain, this tempo is going to be something that's trying to wear them down a little, and we're doing a good job of going quick here. Keeper over there by Blaine, good blocking to the left, following the fullback, Captain Balls there. So bunch set left this time for the Lions as we go shotgun. Beery flanks McAllister to his right. Here comes Blitz, it looks like, off the corner. Maybe not with a motion. McAllister takes it, looks, has a man in the corner. And Balls comes up with it on a shoestring catch at the goal line and slips into the end zone for a Lions touchdown. Well, there was a lot going on with misdirection there. A slow developing play as you fake right, look back left, then look back right again as you see the replay. Balls there in the flat does kind of, and I think Blaine went to his second or third look there. Balls wide open there in the flat, easy touchdown after he checked off from that middle of the field receiver. Great play call, great first drive by the Lions. We'll see if they go for two here. Kind of had Stone Mountain's head spinning on that play with all the misdirection and fakes. So out of the hole to John Russ. Henry Beery splits the upright. Your new score, 11-7. Stone Mountain nothing with 8.37 to go here in this first period. Tell your Ruth Chris scoring recap. The Lions take this opening drive of the first quarter. Go eight plays, chew up three minutes and 10 seconds off the clock and drive. 61 yards for a touchdown from Blaine McAllister to Mike Balls. Heck, really only one play didn't work that whole drive, which was an incompletion. Everything else was positive yardage. And Lions come out roaring with some tempo. And get an eight-play drive and get a touchdown. You'll see again on this replay. Check out the misdirection. We got guys going right. We got guys in the flat going over the middle. We got a motion man to start, so that's going to carry a a defender towards that side. We're gonna fake back left immediately turn like he's looking back right for that motion man. Then he checks down the middle, wide open. Balls the senior fullback. Catches a strike from wide open. Easy touchdown for the Lions. Nice execution there, Richard, on that opening drive. That's something you'd love to see when you get the ball first. Well, our assistant statistician is leaving. So Beery's going to boot it deep, and it'll be gathered in right at the goal line. Bailey is going to get tripped nice up tackle. in the open field right around the 19-yard line. Looked like Carter McIntosh. I mean, no, it was Michael Hollingsworth. Yeah. Sorry. Good open field tackle there. Stayed in his lane. Nice low tackle in the shoe strings. I couldn't tell if it was 29 or 25 on those narrow jerseys. Tackle by number 29, Michael yeah, We like Stone Mountain's font on their jerseys. <laughs> A little bigger. All right, first and ten Pirates, and they'll go truly spread. After this drive, we're going to Trips to the right for Bailey. He'll drop back, and a flag comes out. Motion. motion. Keep that whole right side left early. Yarder, that'll be first and 15. The Lions like that. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. First and 15, Pirates from their own 14 yard line. Bailey out of the shotgun. Looks, looks. He's just going to launch it high. And we may pick it off. It's picked off right around the 45 yard line. As just 
punting for it was Alex Camillo, and he came up with it right at the 45, was brought down right there by the receiver, Yaris Cook. But the that's lines are in business. Line. That's just a jump ball there on a one-on-one -on -one coverage. And if you underthrow a outside receiver, look maybe a little indecisive. You check the replay there, and he threw that ball straight up with not a lot on an easy pick for Camillo coming back to the ball. And that's just what you or just what the coaching staff loves to see a first play turnover. The lines are back in business on offense and plus territory. First and ten lines we go. Three receivers right with a slot. Can't tell if that's Wyndham. It is Wyndham. And the slot to this near side with a tight end. Put Beery in motion. We fake it to him. Oh, great block. McAllister has some room to run. He's going to pick up what looks like enough for a first down as he gets drugged back. A great blocking there on the right. That looked like Cal Barwis with a Good kick out block along with balls. A lot of room to run there for Blaine. Get him nine on that. Mojo Towns and Jaheim Bailey brought, Bailey brought him down. down. Mojo Town. Second down short. So second and one lines. We'll go pistol set this time. Single receiver right, single receiver left. Boy, they bunch it up tight. Stone Mountain walks. Literally seven up. They, they come off the edge board hard every time. So Beery will try and test that right side. He'll pick up almost four. He brought down at the 30. to have plenty for a Lions first down. Yeah, good blocking William Stemmel, the sophomore center. That right side next to him, just an easy blocking scheme, blocking down. And Beery, he's not going to get pulled down by that first guy hardly ever. Diakite and Hood combined to bring down Beery, but not before he picked up four in a line first down. Two receivers right, two receivers left out of the shotgun. Put Beery in motion, fake it to him, look over the middle. Oh, nice play. Shaheen Bailey, he had Steve Bracey breaking. Yeah, real good pass break up there. Because Stevie was kind of in that tight end roll, kind of running a little skinny slant there had a half step the well-thrown ball good protection by the offensive line just a better play by that defender he'll, he'll sleep well tonight but some of the first quarter i think he's been on every play so second and ten lines for the pirates 30. A bunch trips set to this near side, the left side for McAllister. He'll look left to call his own number, spin ahead for maybe three. Yeah, pretty well defended there by the, the front seven, like you say, of Stone Mountain. That's the first time that play had been a wide open, gaping hole there. Pretty well defended there by Stone Mountain. Mojo Towns, Diakite, and Hood all wrestled. McAllister to the ground. Third and seven lines. Out of the shotgun with trips to his right. Now Wyndham may walk up to a slot position. Long count. Plenty of time on the play clock. He looks over the middle. He's got a man open. And Charlie Hoke will sprint into the end zone and put the lines up 13 to nothing. With 6.09 to go. Boy, what a nice throw start. right there by Blaine. My goodness. You could hear this coaching staff tell him to kind of be patient for that play, but we'll see the replay here. Great blocking up front, a perfect pocket for Blaine to allow this play to develop. And then Hope coming from the slot on the right side there. Great drop. Nice yeah. pocket. Right from that right slot, just a BB there by Blaine, and Hoke breaks the tackle or two and gets a touchdown, second one of the night, a big third down conversion there for the Lions. Not only get the first down, but get the touchdown. So Russ to hold Beery to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and it's good. Your new score, love it 14, Stone Mountain nothing. So after the turnover, Alex Camilla the first play, on defense, gets the interception. The Lions, your Ruth Chris scoring recap, the Lions go six plays, covering 43 yards. 
and using two minutes and 10 seconds off the clock, and they get their second touchdown of the night. All right, we're going to throw it down to Katie with the homecoming court. Sidelines with Evelyn and Pierce, who are both on the homecoming court. What was your reaction when you realized you were nominated? Um, I was just very surprised and excited, and I told my mom, and she's happy for me. What was your favorite festivity of the day that went on? Uh, I would say the ripstick race because it was so chaotic and the pep rally just had some crazy energy in there. It was a lot of fun. Today was a lot of fun and we're ready to see what happens tonight. Back to you guys. Good job, guys. I miss the old floats. Yeah. Those good old floats over there in the corner. And the Lions will attempt an onside kick. And they may have come up with it. I think they did. As long as it went the required distance, the Lions got that. Kicked off from the 40. See the replay. The only question is whether or not it went 10 yards. But the Lions got it. I think they're going to give us this ball. You can see how far back Stone Mountain is. A good 12 or 13 they yards off the ball. They started breaking before it was kicked. Oh, yeah, it went with easy 10 yards. What a surprise, well executed onside kick, the surprise element. Yeah, you, Richard, you're right, even was before they were, the kick was off, those guys were backing up, so there was plenty of room for a good extra three or four yards there, and the Lions get a turnover. First and 10 lines from the Pirates, 45. They jump, Mojo Towns jump on a little hard count. Another the big 5'9", 200-pound linebacker. Bit on the hard count, and the Lions will get another three, five yards. Well, you couldn't have written the script any better to start this Woo. first quarter, Richard. Two turnovers, basically, with the onside kick and the interception. Two good drives to this point, resulting in touchdowns. And every drive starting. Another plus territory here. Yep. So first and five lines from the Pirates. 40, we go pistol set. We swing it out to Berry. He gets a block on the edge. He's going to try and get inside the 30 down to about the 28-yard line. Nice 12-yard pickup for Berry. He Excellent is. block there by Luke Wall, the senior captain, just kicked it out. But to your point, Henry is so elusive. It's, it's amazing. Shaky legs. Just that first guy seems to always miss. And you know Henry is not the biggest guy in the world. 5'11", 173. But he's powerful, and he's got really quick feet. And he got another first down for the Lions. Great block again by Luke Wall. Yeah, he is, we say, hard to knock off his pegs. Great balance. First and 10 lines from the Pirates, 30. McAllister's going to hand it wide. And Berry's going to get inside the 20 and get bumped out right around the 17-yard line. Racing over was Joshua Jones. They bump him out, but he picked up 13 and a line's first down deeper into Stone Mountain territory. Boy, this offensive line, Richard, is doing the job up front. Like you said, they'll load seven or eight guys right up on the line of scrimmage in tight. That time we faked like we were going to go kind of inside, and then Henry went even further outside and found a lot of room. Great blocking up front by this offensive line all night long. I feel like Tyler's a top team in Noah. First and 10 lines, we put Hollingsworth in motion under some pressure. He's going to dump it to Vols. Vols is going to slide inside the 10, stay on his feet inside the five, down to about the four. Right down there, we'll be out here Clever right. little play there by Blaine, kind of his emergency valve there, almost a little flick. And then Vols did the rest. Great running down the sideline. I don't know if that was a called screen, but C. Blaine just kind of shovels it. And he did have some blockers in front of him, so that maybe was the design play. You see. 54 and 55 out there. Will Cal Barris and William Stimmel making blocks, and that's going to be a first and goal for the Lions in the red zone. So first and 10 lines from the Stone Mountain three. Empty backfield for McAllister. Again, he puts Hollingsworth in motion, hands it to him. He's looking for a hole. He's going to go off that right side and score. Michael Hollingsworth from three yards out of the Lions capitalize on that onside kick to go up 20 to nothing on the Pirates here. And we're just at the 5.06 mark of this first period. Yeah, Wells, Camerson, some good blocking over there. Big hole here for Hollingsworth. You see the replay. And just blocking downfield, those guys are doing a great job up front. Third touchdown here of the first quarter. 
I'm not sure Stone Mountain knows what hit him yet. Uh, just barely midway through this first quarter, and Lions are lining up for their third extra point. So Barry's drew on the extra point, and your new score, love at 21, Stone Mountain nothing. And you like hearing this, that your third Ruth Chris scoring recap of this first quarter. The Lions, after the onside kick of four plays, covering 45 yards and using just 59 seconds off the clock. I'll tell you, Blaine's been on tonight, but it's been easy because of this offensive line so far, Richard. Those guys up front. That's uh, William Stimmel, Cal Barwis, Luke Wall, Wells Camerson. These guys are doing a great job up front. Really blocking well tonight. Three touchdowns for this offense and three trips. Basically two turnovers. We had the onside kick there, and then we had the interception. So really, the Stone Mountain offense, Richard's only been on the field for one play so far, and it's a turnover. So time of possession is going to be uh, heavily in favor of the Lions here. So Beery to kick it away. John, I didn't catch what you said. Deep for the Pirates are the Bailey brothers, Shaheem and Saquon. And Shaheem will take it or it is three. Trying to reverse feel a little bit, but he's not going to have much of a chance to get it all the way out to the 20 as he gets swallowed up by a host of lines. Cole Pizewicz was down there along with Michael Hollingsworth. And the Pirates will start first and 10 at their own, we'll call it the 18-yard line. Love being back on the riverbank. First down, Pirates. So the Pirates will go trips to the far side and throw it out wide. And Dante Brown caught it, tried to find a little bit of running room, picked up maybe. Two, we'll call it, up right at the 20-yard line. Again, they'll go no huddle, hurry up. Credit Aiden Camillo for dropping Dante Brown at the 20. This time they'll go trips to the right for Bailey. He's got a single setback. He looks, looks. He's going to throw it deep. And what looked like a push-off. Yeah, that was, ball was so underthrown that By the Travis receiver, Kane, yeah. yeah, the receiver kind of pushed off our defender again. That was another up the grab Smith. ball. Camillo couldn't find the ball because it was thrown so high. Luckily for us, he found it enough to where the guy receiver for Stone Mountain tried to attempt a one-handed catch and an incompletion as a result. So third and eight Pirates as they go two receivers right, two receivers left for Bailey. Bailey's back. He's going to throw it over the middle, complete and racing across the 40, across midfield. We're having to give chase. We're not gonna catch him, I don't think, as racing all the way downfield is Yaris Cook. And they did a great job of spreading us and then finding Cook on that little slant. Yeah, they had two crossers, enough time to throw there. Given that on a third and eight, you had to throw downfield and they did that. He hit him in stride and then you saw the speed of that receiver for Stone Mountain is this quarterback to see the replay, throws off his back foot, but throws an absolute strike. And uh, you had the two crossers almost run into each other, but we missed the tackle there. And he's off to the races, we couldn't catch him. So a big play for Stone Mountain is that just energized their sideline. They get their first score of the night. Four touchdowns here in this first quarter. Thankfully, three of them for the Lions. Well, that's some speed right there, Richard, running down the field. We didn't have a whole lot of help over the top and probably thought we'd get pressure. So the Paris will run option and going towards this near corner. Camillo came up and dropped him right in his tracks. Alex Camillo stopped him right at the one. Kendarius Kent, Kendarius Kent had no chance. Yeah, just like an option type, true option. And 
good defense there on the edge and the Lions hold on the two point conversion. Your Ruth Chris scoring recap, Stone Mountain goes 82 yards, three plays. It was a third long conversion there. Not only get the first down, get the touchdown. They'd use just 53 seconds. So your new score with four minutes left in this first quarter, Lions lead at 21-6. Homecoming here on the riverbank, great turnout. We got a score from uh, Yankee Stadium. Not started yet. No, I thought Cardinals tonight. Oh, We're Cardinals tonight. tonight. Cardinals and Nats tonight. That's right. Oh, those insufferable Senators fans. Sorry, I can't call them anything. Senators. They're the Senators. They're not the Nationals. They're the Senators. <laughs> Goodness. You know, think of, you know, uh, Frank Howard, Dean Chance, Bob Allison, the old Senators in the 60s. Armin Killebrew was actually a Washington Senator at one time. I bet you didn't know that. I did. Thought I'd catch you. Watch an old school kicker here. He toes the ball. And he approaches it soccer style, but he toes it. Lions had good field position on their first kick. So they'll boot it towards Beaver, who catches it in his 13, up across the 20, across the 25, trying to find a little bit of running room, but he's going to get it all the way out to the 35-yard line. Well, this Lion offensive line has just had their way with this front seven of Stone Mountain. Just really, there's been yards to gain in wide open chunks here, thanks to that offensive line. Blaine's had... Very little, if any, pressure on him tonight in the pocket passing, and Beery has really done a great job either in a true running formation or in the little scat passes that are almost like a running play. Those have worked very effective, and we've used tempo on offense to keep the Stone Mountain defense on their heels. First and 10 lines from their own 35. We'll throw it underneath, complete, up across midfield, diving ahead for the lines was Logan Givens. Yeah, we saw a couple of weeks ago, Logan and Blaine had good uh, rapport, and he looked had a, several targets, especially in the first half. That was another good throw and catch in plus territory again. We'll swing it out this time to Beery. He gathers it in deeper into Stone Mountain territory across the 40 down to the nice spot at the 37-yard line. Give him 12 on that. Boy, Beery's got some yards from line of scrimmage tonight. And again, that, just that little flat pass, I tell you, Blaine, looks like they've worked on that that throw because um, he is in form tonight, and I think Stone Mountain's going to burn a timeout as their heads are spinning there on defense. Saquon Bailey along with Kendrick Rees were able to make the tackle on Beery, but not before he got 12 in the lines first down. By the way, the uh, holidays are fast approaching, and the Lovett Campus Store is not only stocked with brand new Lovett Spirit gear, gifts, and supplies, it's full of seasonal items to fill your home with mirth and merriment. Or scary things, if that's more your fancy. Their prices are always lower than retail. There's no sales tax, and all proceeds go back to the school. You'll never lose when you shop at the Campus Store. It's open Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. I want to give a shout out to Steve Franks watching tonight. Uh, I won't tell you where he is because that would probably be violating the uh, Health Information uh, Portability Act, but, so I won't tell you. But uh, we miss you, Steve. I'll see you tomorrow for practice. You know, he texted me when I said I can still call him the Washington Senators, and he said keep politics out of the broadcast. <laughs> that to go figure. First and 10 lines from the Stone Mountain, 37. Shotgun set with three receivers split to McAllister's right. Looks over to Coach Moak on this near sideline. Calls out the play to his offensive line. Takes it, looks. Little shovel pass inside to Wyndham. Wyndham's going to get inside the 30, spun around and brought down right around the 29-yard line. He'll get eight on that, almost nine. Well, they took the bait perfectly, the Stone Mountain defense, as we let that blitzer come right on through there, and then you shuffle. You got two blockers downfield. A good run there by 
Wyndham nearly got a first down, a yard and a half short. Another chunk play for the Lions. Shaheen Bailey again led the tacklers for the Pirates, but it'll be second and two lines from, we'll call it, the 29. Now we shift Hollingsworth into a pistol set. Hollingsworth takes it off that left side, and I think he may have picked up just enough. No, maybe not. He got down just shy of the 30, excuse me, of the 27, I thought that was the line to gain. Reese, no, check that, Diakite and Towns brought him down. It'll bring up third and one. Yeah, I thought he had it initially, but they were definitive in their call on the, the, the line judge there, and it is definitely short, no measurement needed. Again, out of motion. McAllister takes it, going to pick up enough for a first down as he slides inside the 25, down to near the 22-yard line. Boy, if he cuts out instead of in, he might still be running, but he gets the first down nonetheless. Good blocking again up front. Good run there by Blaine. Jones and Towns combine on the tackle. But as the clock moves towards that two-minute mark, the Lions are on the march again here in this first period. Shotgun set with three receivers to this near side. We take it, look, McAllister tries to find a little bit of a hole. That play didn't develop as smoothly as I think it's designed to be run. They didn't really take the bait on all the receivers we had. Yeah, we looked like we were going to throw the, throw the ball on the flat to our running back again and then just trying to run back down. I tell you, Jay Jossie, the junior wide receiver over there on that right side, is really doing some good job downfield blocking. He's going to spring somebody here in a minute. Kennedy Wright and Green brought down McAllister after a two-yard pickup. From the 21, we fake it to Beery. We pump. We Double look. Move. We've got Givens in the back corner of the end zone, and he'll score. Givens gathered it in as he took the second step into the end zone. Perfectly thrown ball, and the Lions go up 27-6 here late in this first well, you quarter. Can't make that throw and catch if you don't have good blocking up front because Givens is running a double move here as he's going to stop like he's button hooking and then turn around you see the replay and then Blaine just throws a perfect strike and Givens with a touchdown catch a fourth touchdown for the Lions here in this first quarter and that's another highlight play for Blaine that's terrible, Ms. Pope. put that on tape Ooh, pull that no. Ooh. Out of the hold of John Russ. Henry Berry boots it through. It was a little knuckler. We might have to get Ruth Chris to send us up a steak with all these scoring recaps. Ruth Chris scoring recap. Lions, seven plays, 65 yards. Used two minutes and 36 off the clock, and that's the fourth touchdown for the Lions. They lead it now 28-7. All right, we're going to throw it down to Katie on the track. I'm here with softball captains Emma, Katie, and MK. How did you feel when you won the game in extra innings this, later earlier this week? Um, it was really great to win, and we had a lot of fans there, and it was the first time that a lot of the student body had come out, so it was just a really great feeling to know that we were supported by our friends. And what is your favorite part about softball season? Um, definitely the Chattanooga trip. It was so much fun. We were able to spend the night in a hotel room, and we definitely like bonded as a team, and it was a really, really good bonding experience. What will you miss the most about being on the team with the girls? Um, I'm going to miss all the players the most. Like, we've grown so close to be a family because we spent literally, like, every day together, like, every waking moment, like, between school and practice and games and all that stuff. And I'm just going to miss hanging out with them all the time. Thank you, girls. Back to you guys. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. Flag comes out after Bailey's 29-yard uh, return from the three out to the 31. We don't know what that flag is for, by the way. That was a great-looking Charles Barkley jersey I saw down there during Katie's uh, interview with our outstanding region champion softballers. I think they're going to get Stone Mountain for a block in the back. Wade Shepard made the tackle, but the Lions are the ones backing nope. up. Check that. That's a personal foul on the Lions. I didn't see what that might be. I don't know if they hit out of bounds or after the whistle. That'll be the best field position by far for Stone Mountain tonight as they went the explosive play last drive and got the, the long touchdown pass. Well, actually, it was a short pass and a long run, but an impressive play nonetheless. But the Lions are in command here in the first, still the first quarter, 28-6. So stacked receivers to this near side for Bailey, single receiver to his left. Bailey takes it, drops back. 
He's under pressure. He escapes one, escapes another. He's going to try and go towards his sideline and get back to the line of scrimmage and get slung out there. Well, that was one of those plays where three or four defenders looked like they were grabbing at air. Thought they definitely would have a sack, but Stone Mountain quarterback did a really good job just to get back to the line of scrimmage and not take a big loss. Good pressure there from a number of Lions. And Hammerson is back there. Stevie Bracey and Carter McIntosh brought him down for no gain. He'll bring up second and 10. Got to change the box over there, guys. Come on, Scott Cook. Change that box to second down. Out of the shotgun, they'll give it up. And we've got Lions all around their running back, Kadarius Kim. Yeah, well defended there. You'll see a replay here. We just blew this play up on the edge. Get a good edge set, and then containment is going to be about a yard loss. Carter McIntosh was in that Pirates backfield. They're calling timeout again. Into the quarter, I believe. Oh, it is into the quarter. You're right. Thank you. So we've played 12. we got 36 more to go. Lines are up 28-6 to six here at the end of this first period. And at the end of the first period, as we... Uh, frequently do. Trying to see if we've got any sort of uh, special segment for anybody, any alumni, any campus store athlete of the week. Campus store athlete of the week. Where do we go, True Blue? Okay, we're going True Blue. What are you, True Blue? Gotcha. Love its True Blue Fund. Annual fund raises close to $3 million on an annual basis to support the school's most immediate needs. We rely on the support of our entire Lovett community to meet our fundraising goals and provide every Lovett student with the highest quality education possible. Thank you for being True Blue. We look forward to hearing from you. True Blue Fund needs you. An outstanding first quarter there for the Lions, both on offense and defense. 28 to 6 lead, four scores for the Lions. And virtually flawless execution from this offensive side of the ball. The defense has gotten a turnover and looks strong here except for one play. And Bailey throws it over the middle and dropped right in his tracks. Alex Camillo comes up to tackle Dante Brown, but I don't think the Pirates are going to think about kicking it away as they'll go trips again to this near side single receiver up top. We'll call it fourth and four, and it's a long four for the Pirates. They've got to get to the lines 43 for a first down. I thought they moved early. Bailey looks, throws it, and I think it's incomplete. It is incomplete. Pass falls incomplete, and the lines will take over on downs. Yeah, we have good pressure up the middle there, and he tried to stand in the pocket, let his receiver break open but he was under pressure there. Good defense there by Aiden, Alex Camillo again on that right side. He's done a great job all night. Another turnover on downs there. Well, another turnover, this one on downs. This Lions defense, other than that one long play to get the touchdown for Stone Mountain, done a great job. It's a young defense, too, for the most part. You see some of these guys in there. Freshmen, sophomores, and juniors extensively. So first and 10 lines from their own 47. We put Beery in motion. He motors across midfield into Stone Mountain territory following his blockers. He's going to get shoved out right around the 42, but it'll be just enough for a Lions first down as he picks up 11. Great blocking down the field by Mike Balls and a good kind of stutter run there by Beery to let his, his blockers kind of develop that play. And I tell you, they kept on their blocks, and Beery looked turned in six or seven yard gain into an easy first down, another chunk play. Just great blocking on that right side. Saquon Bailey was able to shove him out, but not before he picked up 11, 11 and a Lions first down. Again, this time we go under center with McAllister. He's got sort of an offset eye, offset eye to the left. He'll take it, leave it with Beery, and Beery will pick up minimal yardage down to maybe the 41, just give him one on that. Yeah, well defended there by Mojo Towns. Yeah, Mojo Towns, uh, Stone Mount defense. That's probably the 
one of only about three plays that we haven't got you know, five yards or more. The other two were incompletions. That one was the first run that was stopped uh, by the Stone Mount defense. Only a, about a half yard to a yard game there. So they walk six up a lot, sometimes seven up on that line. Lines on second down. We'll give it to Beery. He's going to try and kick it out, slide back inside, and pick up enough for a Lions first down. He just grasping at air with Beery sometimes. It's low center of gravity. Can't get him down on that first hit, and then just guys. On the run. He got hit two yards Round down the field, and he gets 11, 10 or 11 yards there. Nine, Great running by Beery. Ali Diakite brought him down, but not before he picked up. 10 and a Lions first down. First and 10 Lions of the Stone Mountain, 32. We're early second period and had a lot of scoring already. So out of the shotgun, twins right, twins left. Empty backfield for McAllister. He'll put a man in motion this time. Fakes it to Hollingsworth, looks. He's gonna swing it out to Hollingsworth. He's gonna get across the 30, down near the 26, they'll mark it. So give him seven on that. He, nice he made something arm. out of almost nothing. Yeah, that was a check down for sure. What good coverage downfield. Like you said, a nice stiff arm there on a defender to get extra yards. And very manageable down a distance here. Diakite brought him down again, but not before he picked up enough to make it second and four lines. From the Stone Mountain 26 as we move towards that north end zone. This time we'll go single receiver to left, single receiver right. We put Hollingsworth in motion. We hand it to him. Oh, I thought he was going to cut inside on Tebow Brooks' block, but he's going to pick up three, maybe just shy of the yard to gain. I think he's just shy of the 22 yard line. Oh, they're going to give it to us? Gosh, Ward. I really thought. Yeah, he initially on the all spot. The yeah, I thought that side judge over there was indicating third down. But they moved the chains and break for the Lions there. Mitchell and Jones brought down Hollingsworth, but he picked up four in a Lions first down. Pistol set this time for the Lions as McAllister looks over. This is more of a six-man front this time. But they're coming again on run blitz. Yeah, they're selling out right there. Yep. We check to a throw. We have one-on-one -on -one coverage on the edge there. Outside receiver, they might put that one in their minds. That play failed again as it's marked back right at the line of scrimmage. Bring up second and Tackle by number nine, Jason Hood, and number 18. The Akite and uh, Hood in on that tackle for the Pirates. Trips David to his near side on second and second 10. Gallister looks over the sideline to see what Coach Moak wants to call in as the play. He'll take it, look, toss it underneath to Valls, and Valls couldn't keep his feet. Nice tackle, tripping him up. I think that was Shaheem, no, that wasn't Shaheem Bailey. That was Chad Green, who made yeah. a real good effort. That's a touchdown saving tackle, because we've got big Cal Barr was out there to block that guy, and the defender did a good job of coming under Cal, and we probably had that design to go inside, and Vols went outside. Boy, that defender made tackle. He could have walked in the end zone. So third and six lines from the Stone Mountain 18. Out of the shotgun with Vols flanking him to his left. McAllister looks over, and let's see if we don't try and go to Stevie Bracey, although, God, we got single coverage up top. No safety over the top. McAllister takes it, looks. He's going to launch it for the end zone, and I'm – I thought Givens got pushed at the end, but that pass falls incomplete. Real good coverage if he didn't interfere because one-on-one -on, -one on the edge there. And that was Jalen Patterson over there. Logan Givens actually had the height advantage. For Don't hear us say that very often, but I thought pretty well defended. And, and Lions will look like on fourth down we'll, we'll bring the field goal unit on. Good job there by the Stone Mountain defense to stiffen, and we might need to call a timeout, make sure we have the right guys in here. Well, we got 16, 15, 14 on the play clock. This will be a 35-yard attempt from the right hash mark. High snap, Russ gets it down. Beery gets his foot into it, and it looks Crushed good. that. Wow. 
Henry Berry's 35-yard field goal puts the Lions up 31-6 here with 7.05 to go in this second quarter. Well, the Lions' offense stays perfect in every drive they've scored. Your Ruth Chris scoring recap. Lions go nine plays and use four minutes and 22 seconds off the clock. Get the 35-yard field goal from Beery. He's doing it all tonight, along with Blaine McAllister in this offensive line, doing everything right. The Lions lead it 31-6 to here in the second quarter, not even midway through this second quarter. Lions offense came to play tonight from play number one, just been doing it. This offensive line is protected on pass plays. They blocked excellently on running plays. First time we've driven down the field, not got a touchdown tonight, but we won't complain for very long about that. But after Stone Mountain had took pace to the wire last week and lost, might have thought there might be a little different flow to this game, but the Lions have come out clicking on offense and defense. So Beery will boot it away, and he'll pooch it to this near side, and they'll try and return it as Green took it. No, that was Kednarius Kent. Sorry, I thought that was Chad Green. Kent gathered it at the 29 and gets it up to the 34-yard line. Beery's kick returned by number three, Saquon Bailey. Number nine, Alex Camillo on the tackle. First down, Pirates. So it'll be first down Stone Mountain from their own 34-yard line as they trail at 31-6 here, nearing the midway point of this second period. So the Lions will go three-man front, five linebackers, and Bailey will take it out of the shotgun. Roll, roll, roll to his right. McIntosh gives chase, and he spins out of McIntosh's grasp, but Gets across the 35 out to around the 39-yard line. And he's brought down there. Beaver was there for the Lions to bring him down. It'll bring up second and six. Now we'll call it second and five, rather. Trips to the boundary side, and he'll leave it with Saquon Bailey. And, boy, he runs into a host of lines and gets driven back. Stevie Bracey was there for the Lions, along with Grant Turner. So third and five, Pirates from the 40. What a spot he got on that ward. Out of the shotgun, he'll drop, drop. Floated to this near side, but too far as it was beyond the reach of Travis Kane trying to catch it right around the, line, the uh, Stone Mountain 48 yard line. And do they dare go for it on fourth and four? Or are they going to try and pooch it on? Make this, you give Lions great field position. They, kept, they didn't substitute. Might do a quick quarterback punt out of this formation, but. All indications are they're, they're going punt it. it. I think they're going to punt it. He's too deep. Yep. He'll pooch it. It gets a uh, Stone Mountain roll, but not much of a roll as it goes out of the 36-yard line. Brings up first down for the line. Just a 25-yard net kick for the Pirates. And the Lions will have good field position. Coach Starting this from their own 36-yard line. Team wrapped up the area tournament at Westminster this week and begin their state playoffs That's pretty good barbecue. Weekend. Weekend. Yeah, Low Country Barbecue does it right every Kevin, year. Yeah. You know, I still have a Sweetwater card that Park Summer Hour gave me. I need to use something. Uh, now that they have a restaurant, too. First and 10 lines from the 36. Trips to this near side. For McAllister now, he's going to look over for the play call. Here comes the blitz. We pick it up. McAllister throws it for Givens, and I think he came up with it. They're going to call back. flag. Yeah, too. he was all over his back right there. Saquon Bailey was all over him. 
Good catch by Given. I believe he did catch it, right? Yep. It might take the play there, although I think P up pass interference would be a 15 yarder. We want the extra yards. Call a hold. We'll decline that. Take Givens. the play. Good throw and catch there. Givens. The chemistry between Givens and Blaine over the last few weeks has been something to watch. It's a good tandem. Kind of a hybrid tight end receiver position for Givens. And Brings up first he's got good hands. And you know, he does a good job of using his body. Just kind of shield guys when they're trying to. He's listed at 6'1", but he looks a little taller than that one against these defenders. So pistol set. And we'll give it to Beery, who tries to get outside. He's going to get across midfield, stay on his feet, and be tackled on a nice play in the open field as Kendrick Reese dropped him after about a seven-yard pickup, play that looked like it was going to develop more. By the way, we're unable to switch camera sources because our computer, unfortunately, is frozen for the second week in a row. Our new TriCaster mini system doesn't seem to be working as well as we were hoping. That's as nice as I can be about it. Second and three lines, empty backfield. And we're gonna hand, here comes flag. Do we have motion? Beery's gonna pick up Beautiful 17, run, 18 yeah. yards down inside the 30, but I got a feeling. Coach Muschamp is not happy on the sideline. So looks like that one might come back. I don't know if we were set long enough. We're retreating. Yeah, that'll that'll eliminate what, another highlight run for Beery. It was all-purpose yards tonight. Legal shift against the Lions, so that'll cost them big time. Shift on the Lions. Repeat second down. Shotgun set empty backfield on the second and eight. We hand it to Beer. He bursts ahead down inside Stone Mountain territory, down inside the 20. Going to be finally wrestled down by Bailey right around the 10 yard line. Great blocking on the right side, all down the line from center to wide receiver. Huge hole there for. Beery in touchdown saving tackle there for Stone Mountain. Lions are in the red zone again. Beery on the run, tackle by number three, Saquon Belly. First down, Levin Lions. So first and ten lines. No, were they? I guess the nose of the ball is on the ten. So first and goal lines from literally the ten yard line. Put Hollingsworth in motion. We hand it to him running wide, and boy, he has no chance as that run blitz. Tavion Mitchell came up, dropped him deep in the lines backfield. He was able to struggle ahead to get it back to the 12. He was better around 15. Tackle by number 18. Yeah, that's probably the only time tonight we've given up a negative play. Good run defense there by Stone Mountain. We'll switch some guys in and out, go into a huddle. No rush, Lions lead at 31-6. Late here in the second quarter. We're inside three minutes to go. The Lions lead 31-6 and try and tack something more on. Second and goal from the 12. Pistol set. We leave it with Hollingsworth. No chance. Hollingsworth was able to maybe make it back to the 11. Again, Tavion Mitchell blew that play up. 
Now we're milking clock, it seems like. Brings up third down for the Lions. By the way, folks, we're going to reboot the system, and the stream will go down at the end of this drive. So, yeah, see the video I sent you too. So we can do our halftime interview. Third and goal from the 11. We put Beery in motion. We fake it to him, guys. And it's intercepted by Bailey right at the goal line. Givens tried to slide inside of him, and Bailey caught it right at the one. Yeah. It's a red zone turnover. You know that they didn't want that to happen. All right, we're going to reboot, folks. Hey, hey, hey. Be right back. Interception on the play by Lovett Stadium Bell has told again following a brief absence of the stadium rebuild. And this evening, the Bell was officially rededicated to Lovett. Okay, folks, we're back. Officially a quick recap. Uh, we went off a reboot. The Pirates had the ball first and ten right in the shadow of the goalpost from the one. And Shaheen Bailey threw a complete first play to Dante Brown for 24 yards. And Bailey kept it himself with the 29. Cameron Shaheen Camillo made the tackle. Bailey then kept it again running to his right. Stevie Bracey brought him down after a one-yard pickup. Then Bailey just completed a pass to Mitchell for 13 yards and a uh, Stone Mountain first down. So they're first and 10 at the 39 at the Stone Mountain 39 with 44 seconds to go. So that's your quick recap while we were off rebooting for the broadcast. First and 10, Pirates from the Pirates 39. Shaheen Bailey puts Saquon Bailey in motion, and he'll try and keep it himself, and he's going to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's a tough kid to bring down. Carter McIntosh, along with Luke Wall, wrestled him down to the, at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and we'll go on this second and ten. He'll launch it deep, and it's going to be picked off on this end and pushed out right around the yard line after a good return. Bear Daniels back there playing center field. Daniel had about a 15-yard return. Credit Mitchell with the tackle, but the Lions with just eight to launch it deep. And we're not going victory set. And Stone Mountain calling timeout. Were they one, two, three, four, five, nine, ten? Well, they no, didn't well, have they didn't have truly yeah, 11 on the field. They were at the number. So, by the way, down for the moment. It has to recycle and uh, reset in order to do it. We had the same problem last week on the road at Avondale. Last score we had on GAC in Dawson County was GAC led seven. That was a halftime score. What do we got for the uh, Senators and the uh, Cardinals? Zero, zero. Andy Bell Sanchez, former break, pitching for the Natitudes. Zero, zero after one. The leads Pace Academy 17-14. That's a third game's going quickly. Benedict Forest, 14 to nothing. Other AAA scores, Liberty County leads Tattnall County, 33 to nothing. Pierce County leads Brantley County, 7 to nothing. Hey, I got a good shot. I got a good shot. So what's McAllister going to dial up as he shows trips to the left? Cut to me. Stone Mountain has three defensive backs all the way back on their own 25-yard line. <laughs> it's 
So they've really only got about a three-man rush here. And McAllister will take it. Look, throw it underneath, complete the balls. Caught, and I'm surprised we didn't have a time. They're nodding their head as if they think there was enough time. We're going to try. This is going to be a lengthy one. Definitely would be a career long, I feel. Yeah, John Russ will be attempting a uh, field, uh, the Jack Hall kind of length. Well, good pass play to even attempt to try, giving us one play left here. And I think Coach keep the field goal unit on. It's going to be a long one. In like the 47 yard range, although the last one Beery hit was was bombed. I'm not sure if it was 47 yards bombed, but he was easily made it from 35. Plenty to spare. Coming up at halftime, folks, our head of school, Meredith Cole, is going to be interviewed live. By the way, uh, GAC leads Dawson in Dawsonville. Please stick around. 20 to 7 at the half. The Lions rethink this and go shotgun and now use a timeout so timeout on the field two seconds to go and it means we'll have time to talk about our campus store love it athlete of the week our campus store love it athlete cross country's patrick pitt the great american cross Kerry, North Carolina last weekend. He set a personal record 35 and was critical in the team's first place finish. Coach Meyer, Patrick continues to be a dedicated team member and part of a really class this past weekend. He took a huge step forward and showed the potential runner he can be country team. So congratulations, Patrick Pitt, our Campus Store Athlete of the Week. And now the Lions change their mind again. He'll go with Russ down right at the 37. It'll be a 47-yard attempt if good. And in the hands of Bailey. That was a knuckleball all the way. And head to the... The Lions will head to the half, but we're going to have a chance before we go to, go to our on-field interview to bring in a special guest here for the broadcast from the class of 81. And you're gonna put these headphones on. Throughout this season, the Lovett Stadium bell is tolled again following a brief absence during the stadium rebuild. And this evening, the bell was officially Lovett originally used by a 1910 steam locomotive that be donated in the mid-1970s by Dot and Tom Campbell and their children, one of whom joins us tonight, Gray Campbell from the class of 81. Gray, thanks for joining us. That's a found out of 81. Thank you so much. Do you have much. a rotary today? Yeah. No, we, I, I keep the time. So 36 you, years of rotary. Where are you, a Rotary? Atlanta West End. We meet at uh, Georgia Tech. No, I'm, we're downtown. So... I'm kind of familiar. come downtown and see us sometimes. I try and I, you know I try and get down there as much as I can, but I run into people that I end up begging them to, to come. Yeah. No, but I beg <laughs> that I come and say, hey, how about coming and be in you know a program for us? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you come and speak about the bell? I've got programs in oh, January. Can, are you the program chair? No, no, no okay. just for uh, just for January. We split it up. Actually, I, okay. We split it up month to month. Okay. So okay. class of 81, by the way, before we get into a little bit more about the bell. Yep. Mary Fleming Williams class. No, no. Um, I don't know what year she was. We were the year, uh, probably the most notable graduate we had was who went on to play for the for the University of Georgia alongside Herschel Walker. Canox Culpepper. He was a Sigma Alpha at the University of Georgia, as okay. I remember. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he was a player. Yeah. A good friend and great guy all the way around. Yeah. So we, we love Knox and Mindy. Yeah, and yeah, Mandy, exactly. Mandy's just, you know, remarkable. Yeah, she put really up is. with us. And we're missing Knox tonight. <laughs> yeah. He's not over there 
Sorry, holding the chain. No. He's not. Your first memory of the bell, what was the first memory you had of the bell? Well, when we were young, my dad started collect bells. He was in the railroad business, and what he did was he, whenever they would get cars in, and they, uh, they would, he would all of these railroad executives. And then they found that they were just steam locomotives. So what they did was these men knew that my dad wanted these bells, so they would ship these bells. had about 13 of them in our backyard. Oh, that's great. And my mother was going nuts. When Christmas morning, my brother and I asked if we could um, go ring. And, uh, and so my dad said, yeah, sure. Well, they didn't know we were going to get up at 630 in the morning and do it. And so we were ringing the bells for about five minutes until the, uh, until the fire engine showed up. And then they said, okay, that's enough. And my dad was good friends with then headmaster Alan Strand. Right. And uh, Dr. Strand and he talked about this. And so they agreed to put a bell here at the school. And while it was on loan, the, um, uh, it would be wrong for touchdowns and whatnot. But the, 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 the provision of the school did not want to use it again, that they would give it back to the family. Well, at one point, when they built the new stadium, lost the bell. And it was in a closet somewhere. And so I came game, didn't see it. So I called up Billy Peebles, who, you know, who, former headmaster, a buddy of mine. And I said, and he, he said, let me see what I can do. And then he, he, the athletic director said, yeah, we know where it is. It's in a closet here. And, and, uh, and he, the athletic director at the time said, yeah, yes, we do want to reinstall it. So they were, and, uh, and then once it was reinstalled, then we had the dedication to a special event because it was, a, it was an opportunity for me to kind of thank people for, you know, not just my mom and dad, but my brother and sister, me, and then my daughter who went here as well. So Your daughter was what class? Well, she, she ended up grad from a high school in Tennessee, oh, yeah. a boarding school. But she would have been uh, four years ago. Okay. She, she just graduated class from 15. college. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. So. Listen, uh, I can still think of that bell being run in the 1973 season. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that's the first season I really remember the bell. Okay. It's the 73. Your class season. of 74. 74. Okay, okay. 74. Jeff Conley. Oh, sure, yeah. Stan Snellings, Carter Poe, yeah, yeah. Mark Young. I, I know all those guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. A lot well. of us do business together. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is wonderful for us. We're very fortunate to have it back. And uh, come back and, and spend more time with us during a oh, broadcast. I'd love to. We'd love, love to. to have sure. you. We, we've got I a could, few more home games now. I could tell some great, great old Lovett stories. So anytime. We'll count on anyway, it. All right. Well, listen, Great. thank you so much. Thanks again. Yes, Appreciate sir. it, Gray. Thanks. That was wonderful to have Gray Campbell come and tell us about the rededication of the Lovett Bell and the family history the Campbells have had with carrying our Lovett Bell. So we're going to have a halftime interview with our Lovett head of school and forward to it. By the way, we've got to fix the mic down there. I think they were trying to change the battery and uh, it may have broken apart. I'm just kidding. Oh, they dropped it. That's not good. We're going to focus on homecoming for a moment. Down to the field for this interview with Meredith Cole. Hi, I'm here with the Lovett Headmaster, Miss Cole. Um, you just completed uh, your first year as Lovett Head Lovett's Headmaster. How do you feel to be a part of the Lovett community? I love being a part of the Lovett community, Madison. It's been a great year. Um, it's really nice not to be brand new. When you say, what does it feel like to be part? Feel is, is what it is. It's, it, it just it feels great to be part of such an incredible place and a place that really feels like a family. We feel like we're at home. And um, we learned last year that you uh, did sports in high school. And you still leave a you still lead a very active lifestyle today. Um, what do you enjoy most? Um, what activities do you enjoy most? 
So um, one of my my daily activities is walking up and down the hill to Laura Downs to my house, which um, is good exercise. But I also love going out Lovett's back gate and going over to the National Park and running and walking. And I see Lovett students over there running and taking advantage of our great tennis courts. And uh, looking back on last year, are there any memorable sports moments that come to mind? Gosh, I um, I think the two that stand out the most are probably um, the uh, the finals for guys lacrosse in the spring um, and, and girls soccer, um, both of which I hope um, have a chance to turn around. They were both heart-wrenching losses and, and right at the end, but they were amazing games. Um, and I am sure those teams are going to be inspired this year to go scores around. Most excited for uh, this year in terms of sports. It's hmm. a good question. I think um, I've been blown away actually by our fans this year. The players are awesome, it's amazing, but our fans are um, like no other school I've ever seen. And Fritz and Chauncey, I'm curious to see what they have planned for us for the rest of the year. But they um, they're doing an awesome during break, and half the more than half the upper school is here, so it's great. Thank you, everyone who Thank you so much for your time. time. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I, can I give a shout out to the Levitt? So proud of you guys. We are getting so many notes and calls from folks who can't get to the games, and you guys are making it all possible. So we really appreciate it. And a huge shout out um, up in the booth to um, to Richard Jarakitis and his son John, and um, to Mr. Clausen who's up there as well. Um, and to Ward, watch you guys and all the efforts you're putting in, and to the great Miss Pope as well. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go Lions. Go Lions. Well, the old man is break right now. So I'm uh, picking up the mic for a moment there. Why don't you switch to us, Tyler? And give him a wave over there. Uh, we had homecoming court announced. Who, who was it? Pierce Schmidt-Fellner and Catherine Olson. Student body president. Oh, all right, well, let's see. I think we got him right here. King and queen. Oh. That's just a lower third. I wonder if we have any graphic for him, any full-on graphic. I think I think that's all we got. We just got a an announcement with their names at the bottom, and we'll probably do an interview with them later here uh, once the second half gets underway. What do we What do we got down? Who's on, is anybody on camera three right now? Looks like it's slightly abandoned. Right now we're coiling. Sounds like Michelle can hear me from the broadcast, can't she? I'm talking for you right now, Richard. Go ahead and put up, or Park, you can pick up the other mic if you want. Why don't you guys, why don't you guys have a little chat here for a moment while we uh, get everybody back up to speed down on the sidelines during this halftime break. But they announced uh, homecoming court, by the way, King and Queen. Yes, indeed. Congratulations to Pierce Schmidt Fellner and Catherine Olson, our uh, homecoming king and queen. 2019, I'm happy to be joined by one of uh, the Cumberland's uh, most famous graduates. Parks would say he's a Lovett graduate, but that's something that uh, most folks try and suppress about both him, his dad, and me. Uh, <laughs> what's up, buddy? Not much. It's good to be back. Glad to see you. Glad uh, to see you. I see that uh, you haven't spent any money on uh, facial grooming. No, it, it comes with the job now. So, still at uh, Sweetwater. Yeah, still at Sweetwater. Armor Drive. Armor Drive. Armor Yards down there on Notley Drive. Oh uh, yes, right. Yeah. Uh, on Op. We've got. Uh, we actually just 
not too long ago opened up our restaurant down there. I need to get over there. Yeah. I, need, I need to get over there. Uh, I'll take uh, I'll take somebody famous from Love It. Uh, maybe Jim Summerhour, Love It <laughs> Class of 71. Yeah, you spelled that right. He might, I might try to bring him. Like to come. I got a haircut for today. Awesome. Yep. I figured I would return to the broadcast booth with a haircut. So, uh, how many years we did? Well, I know we did stats together and, and broadcast together for four years. What was I that? I started training, I think, like in 2007. I didn't Gosh. really start doing it full time, though, until I got in the freshman year, so that 2009. So, seven? So, that was when seventh was, grade uh, on? When it was Patrick Fitzmorris up here. Oh, boy. Yeah, Fitzy. I was, yeah, I was up here with Fitz. Uh, my first year was his senior year, and he kind of taught me everything, and I started from there. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, you know, broadcasts are a little different than uh, yeah, when we were doing a, it because we've well, got video, instant replay, all sorts of stuff going high on dev. Up here. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole lot different. I'm not but, sitting here reading off a scratch sheet of paper of all my halftime stats. <laughs> they are, I can remember those halftime stats many times. You know, going, we got stats yet? Just a second. <laughs> uh, impressions of this first half. Uh, I wasn't expecting 31 to six at the half. No, I, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting the onside kick up 14 nothing either, honestly. But I'm glad playing well out there. Yep. Uh, it's been fun to come back and watch the Lions again. So uh, I know that you know lots of folks in your class uh, tend to come back. You're, you've got a pretty active class who stay involved. Would love it. See anybody tonight that you run into? Uh, not so much from my class. Uh, I did run into uh, Cortland, who was yep. class uh, ahead of me at Love Together. Uh, she played vibraphone and a concussion in the band. Uh, you want to tell everybody what you played? The baritone sax. Yes. As opposed to alto? I played alto, too, but it, it, uh, primarily. By the way, what is uh, Devon Pinnacott up to these days? Don't, you don't remember him from class of O? I don't know. I think oh. he came back. I know he came back to do a couple of clinics with us in our, the uh, the jazz concert we do at the end of every year. I think on one year. Andre Hicks, class yeah, class of 08. 08. So Tavon would have been class of 08. Yep. I think he's been back. I think when I was a junior or and did a clinic with us. Okay. Uh, that's where the last I've been around him. I guess. Any, any involvement with Ellington lately? Not really. Uh, that's part. Uh, not since Mr. Wimmer left. Okay. I really haven't been been back around. Uh, you know, I know Miss Granston's still doing a great job down there. And met the new director. I'm not. Can't remember his name, but. So sign up to give applied lessons and. <laughs> uh, I, I, I definitely wasn't at that kind of level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, went from first chair to six. Real. Oh, just there was only one baritone sax, so it didn't matter where I was. Oh. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Gosh, I should have. I knew my parents were wise not to have me playing a musical instrument. Oh, it, oh aren't I lucky to have Michelle Pope come by and check on me again? It's like every other minute. Are you coming back Friday? Are you coming back Friday? Are you coming back Friday? <laughs> not that I'm missing you or anything. So, uh, what can you tell us news-wise, business, anything? Uh, Anything new you see in the craft front these days, can other talk, than a challenge? Can I can I talk about that on the uh, on a high school football team? All right. Uh, I mean, it's the major thing right now is craft seltzers. It's the 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 white claw and truly mad dash for the uh, the hard seltzer. That's become a that, that's become a big thing. Actually, we have we've got a couple on tap at the restaurant right now. Uh, just kind of putting our feelers out there, trying to see what people like, what people don't. Uh, that's really kind of the next big thing right now in sort of the craft beverage world. Uh, they're 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 really taking over. I think this last summer season, uh, hard seltzers outsold craft beer. Oh my gosh, that's breathtaking. Yep. And you know, we thought. I remember uh, a while back, a lot of people were thinking that sweet vermouth was going to be the new uh, yep. uh, angle. <laughs> uh, now I'm fascinated by it because. Uh, you know, we, uh, America faces a lot of changes, and uh, one in particular is that, you know, the four big 
Constella uh, Constellation, Heineken, Miller Coors, and Anheuser-Busch and, and InBev. Yep, AB InBev. You know, they just see a steady decline. Yeah, and a couple of those brands have bounced back recently. Uh, AB InBev owns White Claw, so they saw a big boost. So they from, saw that as an yep. opportunity. Because uh, like your big two are going to be White Claw and Truly, and Truly's a Boston Beer Company brand, which is Samuel Adams. Right. Who really kind of dominated the market. Interesting. Um, understood until I got into this industry is that uh, Boston Beer Company and Independent Craft Breweries. Which, well, I, you know, I, I'm not sure Yingling is part of the... Uh, they're not owned by anybody. They're the oldest brewery and they're still independent to this day. Yeah, they, and I don't think they're part of the uh, Beer Institute. Uh, I don't think they're a member of the Beer Institute. It's the largest, you know, yeah. brewers in the country. Uh, that's fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, family like many Greeks, we're in the restaurant business. <laughs> you uh, you learn, and there were a lot of Greeks who were in the you know, the Carloses for uh, as distributors, and uh, we've had we've uh, been active in uh, you know in distribution between the Youngs, between the uh, 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 you know I'm not I'm not advocating it one it would be a very interesting uh, market and industry. You know, you you worry about uh, at least I've worried about the impact of cannabis and and what people may decide. You know, that's that that's supposed to be uh, some sort of in, you know intreating on hard seltzer or whatever else may be produced. Uh, we've got a new what we call our strain series. Um, it started at about this time last year, a little bit before this time last year, where we have, it, right now we have an IPA and a chocolate stout all with what is, it's called a hemp. Uh, so it actually has no, there's no hemp, there's no actual anything in it. It's just a combination that give it that same aroma. But we have run into a lot of issues with the various legislations across the state. Some states coming in, some states won't let us sell the beer there. No if ands, or buts. Well, it's uh, it, it can be a challenge because uh, the state is uh, there, there's no national unity. And it's uh, it's kind of an interesting thing with you know coming out of a state like still completely illegal, you know, and they still think that we're no no we're not no we're not not at all. <laughs> Well, <laughs> let's go to, hey, you yeah. want to have, you want to, you've done this before. It's been five years. All right, so uh, in the first half with 11 rushing yards, 121 pass yards for two. They have two turnovers and two penalties for 10 yards. While the, the Lions bring up 145 rushing yards with 200 passing for a total of 345 and no turnovers. For 37 yards, bring you to a halftime score of Love at 31. And still, it's like it's never ended. You've all here in the booth. It's like the 2013 season all open. <laughs> oh man! Well, let's good. do this again. Absolutely. Thanks for my education tonight. And all a, uh, y'all have a uh, uh, fantastic product and or products, and you do a, a job of having kind of a community engagement i'm hoping that the beltline you know yeah, ends up over, over there so your way fairly soon i mean a lot of the grading behind that, it'll cross over 85 and and be right down the street right, from you. yeah we've got us and asw down there so it's a there's a lot of incentive to bring it down that way so asw calling lawyers who yep. uh started it well good for them all right good to see you thanks too. man so we'll bring ward back in Ward, we had a great time talking about uh, hard seltzers. Fascinating. Beers a little bit, but um, you know, it's it, the the lower calorie hard seltzer is all segment. That's what I was learning, and I'm fascinated by an ever evolving industry. For the young ladies, want to drink something, you know, about crazy high alcohol or high calorie. Uh, won't admit that they like them and drink them, but they do. <laughs> well, good there. Very entertaining. Henry Beery, 
tees it up to kick it away. And he'll boot this one high and deep. And he's going to race ahead across the 40 and finally going to get bumped out of bounds. Torrey around the 47-yard line. Saquon Bailey with an outstanding return. Beaver was able to finally chase him. Yeah, we well, done really night. Held them inside the 25 every kick until that one. He, uh, towards the numbers, towards his sideline, got a great return and great field position for the third quarter. By the way, I have a statistic to correct. Jim Sumner, 72, not 71. This is an interesting set. This looks like a set. Bailey's going to hand it off to Saquon. Makes the fake work such that ba Saquon Bailey picks Evan down to the 40. He's tripped up. Pirates, this is an interesting set. It's almost like a wing set. Try and Shaheen Bailey will try and keep it himself down after about a one-yard pickup. I don't understand the value of that. It's almost like they're trying to do a triple option out of it, whereas they pass like a Marist uh, spread option here. Again, they, they're going to hand it off inside, and I think he's going to get brought down short. They're going. Gosh, is he giving him the first on that? We got the fourth down marker up. I don't see how he's giving him the first on that. And the ball's just across the 38, so fourth and just less than a yard. And they'll go pistol set this time. Try for all. Lions look to be showing run blitz. Call his own number, get across the 35, down to around the 32. First down, he just called his own number that time. Well, they were lined up like they were going to go power. We kind of had two linebackers in both A gaps there, and they just forget out didn't have much to gain. Beaver and Balls brought him down, but it was enough for a first down set again. One receiver right, one receiver left. And they're going to try and run it off that left side. Like a, the motion and the action was toward the right and then they just pitched up to that little ran it back left, well defended by the Lions. Yeah, they gave it to Travis Kane, almost a belly action. Yeah, kind of a counter belly there. Yep. Numbers right, two receivers left, go shotgun for Shaheen Bailey. Saquon, second and nine, he's looking left. Now he's gonna tuck it and go. Evie Bracey gets, eludes him. And he's still on his feet. Shaheen bustling his way all the way down into Lovett territory, down to the market at the 12. Let's see. I, I'm he's impressed with Shaheen Bailey. He's shifty, and we had two guys lined up to stop him short in the red zone. Falls and Nally brought him down, but not with Stone Mountain first down. First and 10 from the 12. Bailey rolling to his 14 yard line. So we had the quarterback, we had great coverage downfield. Boy, he's shifting on down a little bit. Looked like that was going to be a five or six yard loss. Carter McIntosh, Mike Valls, and Anderson Beaver were able to make it second and 11. They'll go. I'm surprised they haven't tried to find Hook more after that first touchdown, Ward. Yeah, he showed. The second and 11 from the Lions, 13 is almost the 14. Toss it up high and wide, and gosh. Not sure Chase Nally was kind of guessing, do I cover or do I break do I break on the ball? Well, neither of their receivers, they had two in the area, even looked back, kind of maybe a little indecisive on which receiver was supposed to be, goes aggressively after that. He might get two-hand interception that, but it up to none. We're applying the pressure on Shaheen Bailey, but it, the incompletion makes it order, and Stone Mountain's had the ball the whole time. Now he's going to launch it deep, and it's broken up, and I think they're going to call pass interference, tugging at each other. We have one-on-one -on -one coverage, as Lovett so often does. P50 ball, and I think our defender there, Nally, got one hand holding him, maybe one on the arm, and then played the ball. Let's see what Richard Rice delivers as the... It is pass interference. <laughs> That's a tough one, because it would have been fourth down. Fresh set of downs. Or oh, wait a minute. That from the 14, it's not a fresh set of downs. It's a. No, it is for a team, but did he go to the seven? Yeah, it goes to the seven. I was sitting there thinking, what to be in the down, end zone? But now he's saying third down, so I think you're right, Richard. I said it. It seems like it would be an automatic. Whoa. It seems like it would be automatic first down on a pass interference. Well, it's in the it, thing, was he in? So it should be first. 
No, he is. I, it is third and six. It is not first and goal. It should be first down. Third and six from the seven. We're going to wrap him up around the five and bump him out around the four. Great effort. Shedding a block. Staying on a good. It's a yards after contact. We have him looks like bottled up and then he starts gear and gets. I mean, he got three yards there and it looked like again it was going to be. Alan Pope helped shove him out, but it'll be fourth. And they can get it to the two for a first down. 39 to go. Coach John Rice's Lions softball. Uh, what the linebackers do, you can, for the 2019 Linebackers Golf Tournament, registrate schedule for Monday, October 21st at Peachtree Golf Club. The modified start and concludes with a cocktail reception at 4 p.m. Information and registration. That's a, uh, I don't know what year the uh, tournament does great things to fundraise for the linebackers. Especially after seven o'clock at nine. <laughs> Lying off for all of us. <laughs> yes, indeed. He's... Nothing so, wrong with that, right? Uh -huh. A big play for the Lions defense. You know, this Stone Mountain team has come out into the third night and it's been somewhat effective. Penalty really helped there. So a snap over Bailey's head. He's going to throw it. Get back on it. Back on the six yard line. Outstanding play by Pison. It's getting. You know, that's a jailbreak on the bad snap. Couldn't have been better time for bad snap high. It was it was a fast snap, you know, a hard line of scrimmage, and there was no hope for Stone Mountain quarterback there as he was ambushed. Lions get a big break there and hold Stone Mountain's offense. Probably a touchdown. Bad snap on fourth down, fourth and a one and a half. Lions are all the way out to about the 23. First and 10 lines from the 23. He's in the pistol. We give it to him, and he's going to get just across the 20. Point half was blocking up front. So Mountain tended to adjust. So bunch set to this near side, single receiver up top for McCall under an empty set. He looks, swings it out to Berry, and to be called incomplete, not a lateral. Now the first time high has been a staple in the first half of success. Get a bit of trouble blocking on the edge, which we were fantastic at in the first half. That jailbreak throughout the first half, getting big yardage. Felician probably for the better. But it brings up a third and long here. Either uh, short third and eight or a long step. And there's a whistle. That might be offside. No, it is offsides. Wow. I had Great. To, that makes third and eight, third and three. Repeat third down. As per usual. I don't even know if you're here. Goes straight up the middle with a short, long two yards to get the first down. We look to Beery, and he's going to try the 20, excuse me, the 30 and 33. I'm not sure what the Lions will do here. Good tackle that time by Ali Diakide. It's clearly fourth down, but there's not much to gain here. We might go hard count to start. A bunch set left. Headline, see what Coach Moak calls in. Plenty of time on the play clock, five seconds. We hand it to Beery and goes out of bounds, and it'll be Stone Mountain ball in setting the edge that time. Well, even old Richard, I don't know if he would have gotten the line to gain as he was using, but Stone Mountain uh, looks like a different team here to start this third quarter. So Stone Mountain will get this ball right back, plus territory tonight for the Lions. First and 10 from the Lions, 31. Shaheen Bailey takes it back. He's gonna throw it underneath and gonna be dropped right at the balls. Number five, Caught it and was dropped right in his tracks at the 30. Uh, Take except for the past yard. He's going to launch it deep into the end zone and it's Chase Nally right at the back corner of the end zone. 
Was that trying to find Cook that time? Yeah, well, yep. single coverage. Immediately brings up a third down for Vince here. It looked like maybe a momentum switch here. Well, again, out of the shotgun, under a little bit of pleat underneath, just over Pizewicz, just in. Yeah. Like you said, Richard, he kind of threw it underneath and in front of love two love defenders threaded the needle there in a first down and shotgun set on first down and Bailey has plenty of time he's just gonna bat it up into the air and caught for a touchdown by Stone Mountain on it was the back baseline of the end zone a tip drill we well, practice that on defense but that time the offense it's the tip it's like replay it working folks the graphics are but re problem with the system so Stone Mountain will point range set. Bailey's going to keep it himself, and he's going to race into the end zone to convert on the two-point conversion. Had lineman split out wide and to feel for him with the largest lineman were. Makes it 31-14 with 6.22 to go. Yeah, Ruth Chris scoring recap. Just to get the touchdown in the two-point conversion, they used a minute and four off the clock. In this third quarter, their first uh, drive, First possession of the half was 11 plays and three and a half minutes of possession before they turned on the bad snap. And then Lions went for it on fourth down with a just half a yard to gain, and we couldn't get it. And Stone Mountain goes down the field and gets the touchdown. So this thing's getting a little uncomfortable here in the third quarter. Our homecoming queen, Katherine Olson. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, looks like we had a we'll little mic issue. A little mic issue down there. Yeah, we might want to right. I don't know if they're going to kick it. Through. Thank you. Watch the outside. Watch the outside. For update, Westminster 23, Pace Knights 21. We'll go back down to Madison very shortly after this kick. So Beaver will take it. It is 10, fumble it, pick it up at the five, and he needs to find some running room. He's going to get up near the 20 and get brought down right around the 18-yard line. May have a hold on the lines, though, right around the 17. Chad Green brought down Beaver. Oh, Blocking the back is the call against the Lions. That'll move it from the 17 back to near the nine yard line. Well, not the best start for the Lions here in this third quarter. Giving up a long drive to Stone Mountain that almost resulted in points and then we Stone Mountain goes right down the field and gets a touchdown, a two-point version, and Wait a penalty. If it's at the 17, back to the 7, that's 10 yards. Flag at the 17. It shouldn't be that perspective. So the Lions will go shotgun set, empty backfield, and McAllister will take it. Try and find a little bit of running room. He'll get out near the 10, up 10 out to about the 11. Pretty good surge by the Lions offensive line that time, but even better running by McAllister being somewhere to run it. We can have to throw a pass or two here to offset this adjustment that's in front for Stone Mountain as they're really crowding the line out with a little better success stopping the run. Diakite on, on the cat tackle that time. We've called his name. We put Hollingsworth in motion. We try and hand it off to him, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. Is Diakite? No, that wasn't Diakite. That was Mojo Towns again, and boy, has he been in our backfield a lot. I mean, low snap may have messed up our timing a little bit down Hollingsworth. So we'll face third and or third and a long nine yard line. Given watch that on this near side, he's been open all night.
got Max Protect in there with two backs. Wheel with one of them. So out of the shotgun, we take it, throw it underneath, and boy, that pass falls in. Fortunately, because they sniff that out very quickly. Diakite was then in there. He had known it was going to Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth slipped out to try and catch that screen pass. Not the Lions' finest start to a third period. Stop. That was a completion, right? No, incomplete. Well, he did drop it. Yeah. it was in they know what play we're calling when we're running it uh, so far in this third quarter. Put us up. So Camillo will get this kick away right around his goal line. And he hits a high wobbly kick that's going to get Shaheen. Bracey can't gather him in. And Shaheen says, and finally we're going to trip him up around the 22-yard line. Bracey had a clean shot on him. No fair catch called. He just wiggled and he scooted up that left side, shot out like a cannon. This is a different team here in the second half. Stone Mountain is a completely different team. There's a lot of missed tackles. I think they're caught. Shaheen Bailey is just elusive. So great field position for a 25 yard punt return by Shaheen Bailey. They'll go shotgun set. Man in motion across the formation to this near side. Bailey will drop, look underneath. Way down, way down field. field. There's no screen set up. Yeah, they've got it. They called it. Okay, yeah, there's Sorry. three linemen on the way down the field. Good pressure applied that time by Luke Wall. I definitely accept that penalty. Only a five yarder. The almost way of lineman acted, it was setting up a screen, but he threw it down receiver. This Lovett defense needs to come up with the play as this momentum has shifted here throughout well, this third we, quarter. And we have come already. I thought I heard whistles back there. He's going to elude one, elude another, come to this, still on his feet, and get down inside the 15. Boy, is Bailey elusive. That's what quarters turned into this, the Shaheen Bailey show as they're just putting him in shot. Almost got all of the yardage back. Have Cole Pizewicz chase him down. It'll bring up third and four. Trips to the left, near side. He's looking left, looking left. Going to throw it complete, giving up ground, and going to get brought down right around the 12. Yeah, we'll call it 11 and a half. It'll make it fourth and about one and a half. We may see Bailey just tuck it himself and go. He yeah, kind of threw a floater, which caused that receiver to have to come back for it. He had to give ground and couldn't get any extra yardage there. Good tackling by the Lions defense. It'll be fourth and about a yard and a half. Mitchell caught it, but couldn't elude Aiden Camillo, so it'll make it fourth and almost two. Remember last time they had fourth down, he snapped it over his head. Yep. I don't think he'll put Saquon in motion this time. It is all Bailey, and he's going to get enough for a first down as he is across the 10 down to near the nine-yard line. Well, Bracey on the run blitz there. We had it pretty well covered, but he only had, a, you know, like you said, a short two yards to get there. He fell across the 10 and got that no problem, so. Should be first and goal. It is first and goal from the nine. The Shaheen Bailey show at the moment, right, Richard? Boy, you're not kidding. I don't even know if they're calling plays per se, or is it just Shaheen, you make this up. No, that was called. He'll throw a little bubble screen and just gonna pick up maybe three down to near the six. Yeah, it looked like we had that bottled up a little better. It's just these guys are good after contact on falling forward. That was Dante Brown that time. And they need to get set if they want to try and run this play. They got plenty of time on the play clock. They've got a bunch set to this near side. Bailey's going to roll and find plenty of room to get into the end zone and score. 
Boy, it's rare you see somebody run to this near side where you have a bunch set on this side. That's well, confusing our defense on who, who's covering who and who's eligible. Check, really, I think check. that's a run play all the way for Sheem, and he's just too quick. This is a very strange third quarter based on the way the first half went. Stone Mountain could easily be 31-27 right now. It's 31-20. As they'll go shotgun for the two-point conversion. Launch it into the back of the end zone, and it's broken up by Chase Nally. So Ruth Chris scoring recap. Stone Mount goes six plays, two minutes and 36 seconds off the clock, covering just 20 yards, but they get another touchdown on a short field after the good punt return. And we'll throw it down to the field. I'm here with Katherine Olson, who Watch actually won the homecoming. Bills. So how did it feel when you won? Um, it was honestly really surprising, but it was such an honor, and it was really, really exciting. And what was your favorite part about homecoming this week? My favorite part was probably the pep rally and seeing everyone get so excited about the game tonight and seeing everyone's spirit. Well, thank you so much for your time. And their children, third class of 79. Was that Randy Johnson's old jersey? <laughs> Texas A&I, Kingsville, Texas. Congratulations to your homecoming participants and the winner there. She'll be back next year to hand that crown away. Yeah, this is a weird third quarter, Richard. Is, uh, it was 31-6 at half, so that's 14 straight points, and Lions really haven't done anything on offense. And just great field position for Stone Mountain on punt returns, uh, turnover on downs. I mean, if you would have told me that the Lions couldn't get a half yard on fourth down, the way things went in the first half on basically just dom dominating the line of scrimmage. And we went for it on fourth down there at half yard and we turned it over and gave them great field position. They took it to their advantage and shifted the momentum, got a score. And then the good punt return uh, just moments ago set them up for great field position. And uh, this is just all of a sudden a different Stone Mountain team and it's got Lovett on their heels defensively, so we need to come out. And last time they kicked off to us, we had a penalty, so we started at the six-yard line. So we need to do a better job of getting field position and executing on first down, back to the basics. And I'm wondering, are the officials? They didn't call a, they didn't call a flag there, did they? I didn't no. see a flag. So we're in a ball game, folks. Two minutes, four seconds to go here, third period, and Stone Mountain has clawed back from a 31-6 deficit to 31-20. Ward, I do think they're going to mark it off. I don't know what the call was. Yeah, I think it's unsportsmanlike was the call against. Well, that's a big play because that's um, 15. Was the call against Stone Mountain, and I think it was after the end of the play, I think. The receiver on that far end was jawing with one of the officials about whether it was interference on Lovett. But I saw there's the signal of unsportsmanlike conduct. So it'll mark it all the way back to the 25 yard line and the Lions should get good field position out of this. Beaver and Beery deep for the line, standing right at their 25-yard line. So let's see how Stone Mountain treats this. They're going to kick it deep to Beery at the 26, up across the 35, up across the 30, down inside the 50. Henry Beery down that far sideline. Henry Beery still on his feet, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Henry Beery. He takes it 74 yards to light the scoreboard and the Lions go up 37-20. We can talk about flipping the script right there. The penalty sets him back 15. They kicked the line drive and Beery called that ball. He called off and just sprinted to the right sideline, outran everybody and then outran the containment down the sideline. Wow, what a highlight reel for Beery tonight. And boy, that shifts the momentum back. That's just what the Lions needed as they get six after 14 unanswered there for Stone Mountain. What a return. We hadn't seen a kickoff return. We're going to go for two here, Richard. We've got him. 
And was that, that Hollingsworth. was Hollingsworth. Yeah, they had, they weren't anticipating, you know, covering a special teams, you know, extra point kick there. They didn't have the right personnel in. I don't even know if they had the 11 guys on the team, but even if they did, they weren't ready. And that was an easy call from the sideline up here at the booth, uh, telling them to go and just did the, the two point play there where you just flip it over to the back and tell the scoreboard it's 39. So the two point conversion makes it 39 to 20. 39 to 20. Big shift here for the Lions as Stone Mountain was looking to gain some momentum there on the two touchdown drives, but the Lions answer back on special teams with the Henry Beery highlight real return. I think Richard's at 74 yards. Yep, from the 26. Put that on Beery's highlight tape. So the Lions get the two-pointer and now lead it by 19, 39-20. This has been an eventful third quarter for both teams. Do my Kegels while I stand up. Yep, that's how they work. Thank goodness. Uh. And Barry's going to kick it off again. <laughs> he's done it all tonight. Again, yeah, He's our Shaheen Bailey tonight. So Barry to kick it away. The Bailey brothers deep, Saquon and Shaheen, and we're going to kick it short where it's caught at the 32 and dropped at the 36. Good coverage that time by Luke Ham. By the way, speaking of homecoming, we need to give a shout out to former line great quarterback Jonathan Karkoff, former Davidson Wildcat, serving at Warren Air Force Base outside Cheyenne, Wyoming. So Saquon Bailey keeps it off that left side, picks up about four up to the 40. Grant Turner brings him down. They go to that wing set again, hand it off to Saquon Bailey. He's going to pick up three, four, almost five up near the 45-yard line. It'll bring up third and we'll call it a short two. Well, again, that's that formation. They didn't show it all in the first half, and they're just trying to use it. It's got a, they're a pretty big offensive line. Uh, and they're trying to lean on those guys and just run this power offense, even though it looks kind of like an option offense. Camerson and Lummis bring him down. And Bailey's going to keep it, slide back inside, get caught on a pretty sure tackle that time by Tebow. Was that Tebow Brooks? Looked like it. Yeah, it was. Stone Mountain's trying to go tempo now. We're inside the one-minute mark right now. So, on first and 10 from the Pirates, 47. Again, this wing set. Bailey hands it off to Saquon Bailey, and he's going to go off that left side again for about two or three yards up near midfield. And they're getting some good push with that big offensive line, especially on the left side. It's just power football right now because we're just on a three-man front and an odd front and blitzing our backers on run blitzes. Camershin and Stevie Bracey brought down Saquon. They'll go a second and seven, and Bailey will keep it. Shaheen Bailey will keep it himself. Tebow Brooks is out there, and Luke Wall's going to – good gosh, we got to get him down. We are grabbing but not driving him to the ground. Finally, good job, good effort that time by Luke Graham, who stayed on his feet and – wrestled him down and that'll do it we've gone 36 minutes we got 12 more to go love it leads at 39 20. want to mention that our faculty staff highlight this week is middle school teacher jeremy oliver the faculty staff spotlight is proud to recognize middle school teacher jeremy oliver who in addition to teaching 
sixth grade English, Jeremy launched the middle school online news network in Monday morning minutes. He uses a host of student reporters and student gathered footage to kick off, kick off advisory each week. Jeremy has also been instrumental in recruiting and preparing middle school students to join the Lovett Network broadcast team when they reach the upper school. With the rest of his free time, Jeremy is an assistant coach for JV football and varsity boys basketball. Thank you, Coach Oliver, Coach O, for your loyalty and service to Lovett. You're a great member of the community. You can see him. You can see him with the glasses waving to the camera right now. As you see Brian Overly and Steve Brown all smiling. I hope Coach Overly realizes that Ohio State is still going to not make the college football playoffs again this year. Third and three, Pirates to start this fourth period in Lovett territory at the 46. Again, that wing set. I still don't understand why they don't throw out of it. Wing set, Bailey's going to take it. He is going to throw it. He's going to clear side and caught right at the 12-yard line. Good wow. coverage by Chase Nally, but give credit to Dante Brown, who followed that the whole way. We had double coverage over there. and He still got, he caught, came down with that ball. Wow. Well, you said they should throw out of that set, and they did. Yeah, I wish I, they hadn't have. Well, I'm sorry. I just, I had a feeling it was coming. Or they know they've got single coverage more oftentimes than not on the edges. That was a fine catch in traffic. From the 14, He'll take it, throw it high, but caught. That ball hangs up there. That was again to Cook, who caught the touchdown pass to start the scoring for Stone Mount. It'll pick up eight and make it second and, eh, second and two, second and a short three. Bailey takes it out of the shotgun. Looks, he's in some trouble. He's gonna struggle ahead to the five and maybe make it across it, but he may be marked down right there. Gosh, we seem to still keep grabbing instead of running through him. Bailey on the keeper. Tackle by number 51, Brent Turner. Bracy and Turner combined on the tackle, but got third and one for the Pirates. And their offense has been hard for us to stop in this second half. And but for a high snap, they would be even closer. And Bailey just calls his own number and just pushes ahead down inside the five, down to around the three-yard line. Well, he's got to be exhausted. Perhaps we talked about it in the first half, how few players they have. But they've been going hurry up and this third quarter, and we kind of look like the tired defense now. But you're right. I mean, Shaheem's over, bent over at the knees on close to the sideline trying to catch his breath as he's been involved in just seems like nine out of every ten plays he's running the ball or running out of the pocket and trying to create a play. So first and goal from the three, two receivers left. Now he puts a man in motion. That's Mitchell. They go trips now to this near, that far side. He's going to try it. Oh, gosh, I thought we might have had a pick. He tried to throw it to Saquon Bailey. Cole Peisewicz came up and dove for it, but pass fell incomplete. Yeah, they had formation to the right, and there's going to be a hold. Oh, that you see the big. call, that's big for the Lions defense. Their formation was strong to the right, and they went back a weak side there trying to set up a little one-on-one -on -one screen type play. I think they got their right tackle for holding. We had the play well defended, almost intercepted, like you said, Richard, but a little higher throw right there. Is that the right mark off? I guess that's correct. From the four to the 14, correct. All right, shotgun set on First and goal from the 14. Again, they go with that same set. Trip. That snap again. Blow snap. Bailey grabs it, picks it up, and maybe loses two yards back to the 16. I think that was supposed to be snap to Saquon. 
and oh. was going to run it to the left because the way Shaheem, he didn't even go after that ball. You know, replays down, but that was a bad low snap left. Turner and Graham combined on the tackle for the Lions. This time they'll go two receivers right, two receivers left on second and goal from the 16. Now he puts Mitchell in motion, that same set. Trips to the right for Bailey. Is he going to go look back left to Donce Brown? No, he's going to throw it underneath to Cook, who catches it at the 10 and dives over to the 7. That play picks up 9. Yeah, we, Alex Camillo brings him down there. We kind of had bracket coverage there in a, kind of a loose zone, keeping everything underneath. So he had an open receiver there, and we were just trying to contain. But like you said, a 9-yard game there. Like to keep it in their five yard range. For 165 pounds, Shaheem Bailey gets the most out of that 165 pounds. Lines back off the blitz, now come with it. And they're going to chase Bailey. We got to set the edge and come up and drop him. He's going to slip in and score. Well, that's their favorite play is for to break down and for Shaheem to just go wide side of the field. The, the, the long part of the field, and we just can't break him down and get him get him down. That's about the 10th time he's gone scramble to the wide side, and second time he's gotten a touchdown on it easily. So that's a six-point touchdown, and Stone Mountain will go for two. So two receivers right, two receivers left for Bailey. He's going to float it. Caught, no, incomplete. I thought Dante Brown caught it right at the goal line. A nice play, breaking it up. That was Chase Nally. Now that's a big stop there because that's a 13-point advantage for the Lions instead of an 11-point advantage. Boy, this has just been a weird second half. I think the Lions offense has only had the ball for about six plays. Your Ruth Chris scoring recap. Stone Mountain goes 13 plays covering 64 yards and five minutes and 19 seconds off the clock. The advantage the Lions had with time of possession in the first half has been completely the opposite this half because Stone Mountain's had the ball the whole entire half. All right, we're going to go to Madison on the sideline. What do you got, Madison? I'm here with Chelsea Mason and Kira Sinara. So what, have you, what do you think about the game so far? Um, I think it's been really fun. I always love it when the Lions win, especially by this much. I think it's really fun because the theme is really cool, and it's also so much better when we're winning. And what has been your favorite part about homecoming this week? Um, for me, it's I kind of like our theme for tonight because no one's really like, done this theme before, and I think it's really funny. And a lot of people went all out, which is cool. Uh, I really like Powder Puff. That was earlier today because... As a girl, I cannot play football, but Powder Puff gives me the opportunity to explore like my options. And she got a touchdown in Powder Puff today. Just saying. Well, good job. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Richard and Ward. Beery's going to step out of bounds right around the 27-yard line. Well, we need to get a couple first downs here, Richard. Score would be great, but this offense is kind of you know, the touchdown tonight came on special teams in the second half. And really, I think we've only had four or five or six plays, and I don't think we've gotten maybe one first down or no first downs. First and ten lines from the 26. We'll go under center. Boy, they've got eight up on line, and we're going to run trap. And we don't have any room for him. Yeah, we need to do a jet sweep or something or the little quick hot pass screen kind of in the flat. Yeah, he, I don't know how he got two yards out of that. I mean, their adjustment, they were loading the line early in, in this game in the first half too, but we were blocking and kicking them out and getting to that second level very easily. But so far in this second half, we have been unable to get to that second level. They bottled us up. Our, blocking effectiveness is I'm not sure what adjustment they've made other than to keep their backers at that second level a little better and they're just getting penetration up front. 
second and eight lines. Two receivers to this near side. One receiver as it goes in motion. That's Beery, and we're going to try and run him wide. They set the edge great, and Beery's going to pick up just two. Yeah, he, it's going to be third and five, and I'm with you, Richard. I thought it'd be about third and eight with those two runs, the way they bottled him up. Diakite and Ikorkia brought him down, but just after a two-yard gain, it'll make it third and six. Ward, I'm it's getting a little uncomfortable. I'm looking for... Gosh, it, the single coverage out top, I would think Givens could get outside... Now we've got some running room for McAllister, and he's going to get up across the 40, up to the, about the 42-yard line. Nice run by McAllister. He comes up gimpy, though, which we don't need. Chad Green tripped him up, and not before he picked up. 12 in a line's first down. A much-needed first down. We can burn some clock with this. We spread it out with four guys wide, but just went back to old-fashioned bread and butter. And uh, well blocked again. Cal Barr was pulling on that play, and he kicked it out and sprung it for the first down, and Blaine did the rest. We did spread him out formationally there, and that worked to our be very effective. So, again, they've got a seven-man front this time. Shotgun set. McAllister takes it. We try and give him a little kick out. He's going to get across the 45 and get run out right around the 47. He'll pick up four. Joshua Jones came up from his defensive back position to push him out, give him five on that. Coach Muschamp wanted him to stay in the field to play to keep running clock. Can't say I blame him. Well, that was a huge first down, Richard, on the third down conversion by Blaine. I think Stone Mountain is starting to feel it a little bit in the second half. They make that stop there and get the ball back. We put Beery in motion, fake it to him. McAllister bursts ahead into Stone Mountain territory. Inside the 40. We hear the coaching staff next door saying, hold on to that ball, hold yeah, on to that ball. And whistle. He was going second, third, fourth effort. But again, just great blocking on the right side. We just went back to the, the simple and effective with Blaine doing the power keeper there. And with them being aggressive on one side or the other, they're getting penetration up, and that's fine on that play. Let him have the penetration. We'll just swim past it, get good yardage, and now we're into plus territory again. This is just what Lovett's offense needed. First and 10 from the Pirates, 37. We're going to look to get Beery some running room. He's going to burst ahead down inside the 30, down across the 25 to the 24-yard line, give him 13 on that. Is that balls or... Yeah, that was yep. balls on a great kickout block. If we had a replay on that, he set the edge in a positive way to block that guy, and Beery just turned it up and showed his speed. I tell you, if we could get one of our stat guys to get us a little Henry Beery statistical line tonight, we'll report that for you because he's had an unbelievable game, all-purpose, rushing, passing, return yards. And Chad Green made the tackle, but the lines are in business. At the 24, shotgun set. We give it again off to Hollingsworth. He's going to rumble ahead inside the 20, and now we're leaning on him. Give him seven on that down to the 17. Yeah, you said it right, Richard. They're just leaning on him now with these three, four plays in a row. Most importantly, those Blaine carries really got this defense back on his heels. As heck, for the first quarter and a half, we couldn't do anything on offense in the second half, I should say. Chad Green brought him down, along with Joshua Jones. Second and three lines from the Stone Mountain 17. We go pistol set now with Hollingsworth and the pistol. On the trap, we give it to Hollingsworth. He cuts back inside, down inside the 15, and kind of get pulled down right around the 12. Davion Kennedy brought him down there. Okay, right number 
So first and 10 lines after Hollingsworth's six yard pickup. So it's first and 10 from the Stone Mountain 12. We may see a little bit of running action again for the Lions. McAllister out of the shotgun, puts Hollingsworth in the pistol behind him, leaves it with Hollingsworth. He looks for running room, gets down to the 10, and picks up two. And boy, that clock continues to run. 349, 348, 347. Right on the carry. Tackle by number 18. David Agorkia brought him down. Brings up second down for the Lions. Yeah, good blocking downfield. Tebow Brooks getting after it. Now we can use some of this play clock and clock inside of three and a half minutes with Lovett with a 13 point lead. So power pistol, power pistol right with two receivers left. We give it to Hollingsworth, he skips outside. Hollingsworth's gonna score. And boy, I don't know how we got that playoff because I think we snapped it at the one second mark. Well, we just wore him down. Like you said, we're leaning on him there, Richard. And that's uh, that might be one of the best drives of the year because I tell you, I really felt like the momentum had shifted. I don't know how, but, but you know, if you would have made me bet based on the way things went in the first half, I would have thought Lovett would have come out and dominated. Maybe they just thought they would. But to Stone Mountain's credit, they made some adjustments on defense and, and really the, the Shaheen Bailey show the second half. And I was getting a little nervous, but that drive really is a, might be the game clincher. I think it that probably will be. It will line up for an extra point. So out of the hold of John Russ, Henry Beery takes the quick two-step and boots it through. Your new score, Love at 47. Rather, Love at 46, Stone Mountain 26. Well, your Ruth Chris scoring recap, that's a good one right there. So that's one of the better drives to answer. Lions go 10 plays, covering 74 yards and chewing up five minutes and 32 seconds off the clock. That's just what the doctor ordered. And two Blaine McAllister runs for first downs were key on that drive. And I'll tell you, I was talking earlier about Henry Beery having probably one of, if not his best game of his career. He's got 17 rushes out of the backfield for 124 yards. He's got six receptions on pass catches for 75 yards. And you know, we told you about the big momentum shift back for the Lions as Henry had a 74 yard touchdown on a kickoff after the big penalty and the unsportsmanlike conduct after a touchdown for Stone Mountain. And Beery took it 74 yards to the house over on that far sideline. And so Lovett now leads it 46 20 point, 46 26, a comfortable 20 point lead. As Lovett answers the bell after Stone Mountain kind of punched us in the chin in the third quarter. So Saquon Bailey returns it all the way out to the 34-yard line. Two minutes, 57 seconds left in this game. Lovett leads it 46-26. All three timeouts for Stone Mountain left. And I think they're going to not leave them on the board. You might see him try to hit a home run here in the, one of these first two or three plays as they've got one of these stretch wide formations, which Shaheem, if he doesn't throw for a home run, he'll try to run it for one. So the Lions go with a three-man rush. Shaheen Bailey's just going to tuck it and go. And Pope's going to try and grab him and wrestle him down around the 41-yard line. Nice job by Alan Pope just holding on and pulling him down. He picked up six up to the 40. Shaheen Bailey on the carry. Tackle by number 44, Alan Pope. Second down for the Pirates. Clock's inside, two minutes and 30 seconds now. Two receivers right, two receivers left on this second and four from the Pirates 40. Bailey drops back. He has plenty of time, just a three-man rush. Now he's in some trouble, so he's going to tuck it, float it, complete. 
to Dante Brown, but he has to drop to the ground in order to hold on to the catch. Well, he was very close to being over the line of scrimmage when he threw it, but uh, I think it was a fair pass. Like you said, if he throws that a little higher, he might run for a good bit more yards. That'll stop the clock momentarily to reset the chains. Trips to this near side, and that's where Bailey's looking, still looking, still looking. Now he's going to roll, and he's going to go down. I can't believe he didn't just chuck it somewhere. Great job of setting and the no edge there. No keeping, keeping Shaheem inside. Sandwich tackle there, and they are letting a lot of clock go. Yep. They've got to get their receivers back here as they were all on fly routes or nine routes. So Bailey has trips again to this near side. He's going to throw it underneath to Dante Brown, who cuts to the outside off this tunnel screen, and he's going to pick up big yardage as he gets all the way down to the 31-yard line, picks up 16 yards on that. So one of our defenders was supposed to stay on the outside. Instead, we had two guys inside, and he just went outside no problem. Pretty effective pass play there. He broke coverage. Again, no time out there. That's first down so Bailey from first and 10 at the Lions, 31, will drop straight back. We're almost inside a minute. Now he's going to roll. He's going to have to keep it because he's across the 30. We're going to pull on him and finally pull him down. Good effort that time for the Lions. It's Still no timeout. Tebow Brooks was over there to pull him down. And Baird Daniel also. Clock continues to run. 45 seconds, 44 seconds. Bailey takes it. He's just standing there. He almost looks exhausted. Now he's going to roll this side. Float it, complete. Down inside the 15 to block. Mitchell. And while we've got this uh, penalty, we're going to take a moment to... Mention our alumni spotlight. Virginia Siler, Lovett Lower School teacher and 2011 alumna, was named head of the girls' soccer program for the Lions over the summer. Siler, who teaches fifth grade and also coaches cross country, was a defensive star for the Lions from 2008 to 2011, leading the team to the state playoffs all four years, including two appearances in the semifinals and one in the finals. Siler went on to play collegiately at the University of Mississippi and earned a degree in elementary Final education. Four, Virginia West Siler, Western congratulations. Cities. The Lovett Alumni Spanish Spotlight shines West. on you. Great family, the Silers. A lot of Lovett lines out of that clan. So with 31 uh, seconds left, they will call their first timeout. So timeout on the field with 31 seconds to go and lines leading at 46-26. By the way, all Lovett alumni and former Lovett students are considered members of the Lovett Alumni Association. The Alumni Association's mission is to work for the benefit of the school by encouraging members through fundraising and participation in other alumni, school, and community-oriented projects. The Alumni Association plans various events throughout the year, including homecoming, reunions, business speaker events, and run and love it. Alumni also manage a scholarship fund for children of alumni. Stay in touch with the Lovett Alumni community on Facebook and LinkedIn, or email us at alumni at lovett.org. Got a score from uh, the Senators' cards game? Yeah, one nothing Washington. Got the bottom of the sixth. Who's pitching for Washington? Camilo Pasquale. Early win. Anibal Sanchez. Anibal Sanchez. Former Atlanta Brave. All right, 31 ticks left on the clock. Second and 11. Bailey takes it, drops back. He's just going to throw it. Com oh, battered away by Bear Daniel. I thought it was a sure completion, and Bear Daniel broke on that ball perfectly as he was trying to find Cook around the 15-yard line. That was awesome. He had outside zone, kind of more towards the sideline, and that ball took a little while to get there, and he had just enough to get his paws out and get a pass break up on that. Well done there by Bear, the senior. Stops the clock with 26 seconds to go. A 
again out of the shotgun, trips to the right. Bailey takes it, looks right, looks right, just stands around. Going to float it high and incomplete. He was trying to find Mitchell around the 15 himself. God, that play only lasted four seconds. It sure seemed a lot longer than four seconds. Well, he's standing back there for at least three before he even does anything. Because it was 26 seconds to go, and that there were only four seconds ticked off the clock. Fourth and 11, and Bailey looked over to the sideline for a play. He's got three receivers right, a single receiver, Mitchell, to this near side. Bailey's going to take it, take his time, take his time, direct traffic and throw it complete to Cook down around the five-yard line. Aiden Camillo broke on it, but he just had people just wandering through it. Fourth and 11. It's almost like a, I've seen it before. It's almost like the, in, your, in the backyard, when you know you have nobody rushing the quarterback until they count to 10. He was just sitting back there directing traffic like the old schoolyard plays. That stops the clock with 10 seconds to go. By the way, I want to mention that our next game's on the road at Pace Academy. Not, Don't go to Pace on West Pace's Ferry Road. You'll have, you'll have to wonder where their stadium is if you go there. You need to go over to uh, their uh, complex over off South Cobb Drive. Directions are on the Lovett website. If you can't make it, you can tune in. We'll be on the air at 7.15 with pregame and kickoff at 7.30. Next Friday night, October 18th. Ward, where do the dogs play tomorrow? It's a noon game in Athens, in Athens against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Coached by? No. Not familiar with who that coach. Oh, yes. Paul Dietzel? No. <laughs> that would be Will Muschamp. Muschamp coaching tree. All right, first and goal for the Pirates from the Lions three-yard line. Bailey takes it, looks, looks, looks. No pressure. Now he's under some pressure, and he's going to throw it complete for a touchdown as we gave up coverage. I think that was on date. Well, yeah, that was Dante Brown. Good for Shaheem. I'd, I'd much rather than not score there, but Shaheem Bailey has done it all for – Stone Mountain tonight and probably all season long, but he's, he just stays long enough in the pocket and found a wide open receiver, and that'll pad the stats. And Shaheem deserves it. He's played a heck of a game. He really has, and I'll tell you, if they can, if they can hold on to this junior class, because they got a lot of juniors, if they can hold on to this junior class, they could be a good football team next year. Not that they aren't this year. Bailey's looking, looking on this two-point conversion, escaping, going to float it high, and it's going to be picked off. Ritter Windham went up high, and that should do it for scoring tonight. 46 32 lines as we'll uh, head to game eight on this uh, 2019 campaign. Well, I didn't do too bad tonight after being out of this for four games. I mean, you're, an, you're a pro's pro, Richard. Come on. Huh. It's not well. like you've been through that much or anything, right? We're glad you're back. Well, there's two seconds left, so they'll have to kick it off. But a uh, very interesting second half here. Is, again, I would have lost some money if you would have made me bet on how the game would turn out. I, I would have thought we would have had a running clock in the fourth quarter. But credit to the Stone Mountain coaching staff and their players as they came out and made some adjustments on defense. I don't think Lovett had a first down in the third quarter. We had a huge kick return by Beery to sort of change the momentum back. But... The Stone Mountain teams deserve some credit for their their hustle and what they did in this second half as they were down 31-6 at half and you know they've scored three four touchdowns in the second the second half mostly uh, that third quarter was uh, you know if that if they hadn't had that bad snap at when it was inside the five on fourth down I exactly there this this could have been a much scarier game and it was already pretty nerve wracking. So the onside kick is recovered by Stone Mountain. 
but unfortunately, Mojo Towns cannot advance it. He was tackled anyway. But we've played 48, and that'll do it for this game with the Stone Mountain Pirates for the Lions as we move to 5-2 and two on the season. You can see the ultras lined up down to rush the field. Post-game ward. Well, let's give thanks to our sponsors. First of all, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, Center State Bank, Atlantic Grill, Melwood Springs, Natural Springs Water, Natural Spring Water, Played Against Sports Bucket, Concord Pharmacy, and the Metro Atlanta YMCA. So, uh, well, like to your point, Richard, at the beginning of the game, you said it'd be a really good chance to, to go ahead and win this game and try to get a stronghold on that number two seed. And we did that tonight. There was some things, obviously, we can improve upon. I know every football game, Coach Muschamp will say that, but our offense really in the first half was clicking on all cylinders as we scored every time we t touched the ball. And, you know, the second half, especially that third quarter, you know, you'd like to see a little different outcome. But uh, I'll give Stone Mountain some credit. But uh, uh, to love its credit, they answered the bell with a, a special teams. Long touchdown return by Henry Berry, and then we had a long drive with Blaine really handling this offense and coordinating the offense uh, with some great runs. And we got it back and stuck that ball in the end zone. Stone Mountain scores late, but uh, you know, a great victory for the Lions, a region victory. Just makes next week that much bigger because bi you could win tonight, and they took care of business. And we were fortunate to uh, have that long five minute, 32 second drive that got us all the way into deep into the fourth quarter because uh, that, that last touchdown was key and vital to us. Well, uh, next week at Pace Academy. Look forward to it. Looking forward to it myself. It Thanks, man. Oh, no. No, no. No. By the way, folks, if uh, you want to follow us on Twitter, go to Love It Athletics. It's just at Love It Athletics. We're looking to have about 2,000 followers soon. So uh, make sure you go on to follow Love It Football. And also Instagram at Love It Athletics. We post frequently on all sports. And we're trying to expand as much as we can what we do with all athletics at Love It. We, here are our final statistics, which uh, we'll ask Park Summer Hour in a cameo role to come on and offer. We never get him all the time, so we might as well take advantage of it. <laughs> How about it, Park? You've done this before. All right, so we finished the game with Stone Mountain with 88 rushing yards and 275 pass yards for a total of 362. They had three turnovers and seven penalties for 65 yards. Lovett finished the game with 223 total rush yards, 200 pass for a total of 423 with one turnover and four penalties for 56 yards. Your final score is Lovett 46, Stone Mountain 32. You know, you wish that uh, the Tennessee Vols could <laughs> put up 46 points. I, I was waiting for you to bring up the, the volunteers this year. It's all right, buddy. <laughs> it's all right. So, folks, uh, that does it for this uh Broadcast, I want to thank uh, all the folks who make the broadcast. 
possible. Ted Gilbert, our athletic director, had a good chance to visit with him. Michelle Pope, our sports information manager. Mike Harner, our assistant athletic director. Katie Johnson, our assistant athletic director. Betsy James, our operations coordinator. Amanda Stibbs, athletic department communications. Greg Hamrick, our director of information technology. Jim Clawson, our coordinating producer, who's probably asleep by now. John Jerichitis, our producer and technical director. I'm familiar with him. He needs to shave. Tommy Wiggs, our camera coordinator. The spotter. Uh, she's nameless. Rachel Best in network control. Alan Goodwin, our media coordinator. Lily Siegel, our student statistician. Brandon Holmes, our student statistician. Alec Cowenberg, student production assistant. Bennett Cowenbergs, student production assistant, and Alvi Doftari, student production assistant. Katie Fryberger, Tyler Lamberson, and Madison Peavy, all our student production assistants with Grace Schneider, do a great job for us. Jordan Siegel, another student production assistant for us. And David Hayes with the Georgia High School Hellman Project. Todd Woodruff at ESE Network Operations, and of course, Randy Brightman, who offers us engineering and support. So for Tommy Wiggs, Ward Jones, and all of our production crew, our time is up. We thank you for yours. Your final score from the Riverbank, the Lovett Lions, 46. The Stone Mountain Pirates, 32. Glad to be back with you, and see you next week. Love It Football is brought to you by Love It Football is brought to you by the Love It Linebackers, Roots Chris Steakhouse, the steak dinner done right, Center State Bank, Bank Smart, Bank Local, Melwood Springs Natural Spring Water, Atlantic Grill, your neighborhood grill, Play It Again Sports Buckhead, your neighborhood sporting goods store. Concord Pharmacy, when you have your health, you have everything. The Metro Atlanta YMCA, here for Atlanta, here for good. And by ESC Networks.